We are recording. We're recording. Are we back? Are we in a wee even? I have no Can clue. Can you see me in the wee screen over there, boy? Yeah, just about, but I've got a load of glare. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're oh, pro- we're definitely we're probably back. all right. We're definitely we're probably back. All right. Yeah, we're yeah. definitely back. Half my head will be cut off with all the video. <laughs> yeah. There's no audio to this at all. <laughs> There's this audio blackout. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Black we're screen. starting with a blackout. Who knows? <laughs> no, fingers crossed it'll be all right. I feel out of practice. Mate, it's been a while. It has. It, it hasn't been on the old podcast, although we have an episode going up. I'm not going to say tomorrow because that'll confuse all you. There's an episode going up that should have gone up midweek but didn't because of internet failings and heat. Mm. So everything was overheating. Um, so you guys haven't really missed too much, but we have missed each other for three weeks. Three, yeah, three weeks. Yeah, because we had a backup one that came out. We had out. two backups. Yeah. That have gone up in the meantime. So... That's what you've seen of us. So you've seen past us, present us, and now this is future us, but yeah. not to you because it'll be present. Yeah, but it's future for us. Yeah. So, yeah, but it's been ages. This is literally the longest that I've not seen you in like a year and a half. I know. It, it's been every week, bar like maybe one week. I think week. two. Two weeks yeah. we missed an entire year. Yeah. So we did well. Yeah. Yeah, we've done all right. I'm okay yeah. with it. I don't feel too bad. Like, and it's and it's we've had legit reasons. It's not like we've just been fucking lazy. No, there's been lots going on. Yeah. Um, Lou is now the proud new owner of a devil dog of a pupperino. Pupperino. Yeah. Absolutely who, amazing. Obviously, and then I was away in France. Yeah. Riding around on my naughty bike, having Aye. damn it life. Look brilliant. You were brilliant. It were. Yeah. And then we were meant to get the ball rolling last week. And then I got the. And then you uh, got the COVID. The, yeah, the old COVID, the which COVID. was spectacular. Yeah, you just sat in your uh, garden being bored. Yeah, yeah. I had one day where I was like, I had like a bit of a fever and stuff like that, and felt kind of shit. And it was one of the days where it was really fucking hot, which wasn't great. Yeah. Um, and then just a bit of a head cold and felt quite tired, but just bored, man. So yeah, I just was. <laughs> I was just doing some work in my garden, and like I, I had to. Wh- I had to fucking wheelbarrow like two tons of uh, gravel up my drive. You love that, and I, like, know, like I know. Your monthly workout, but moment. it was just like I was. I did. I could tell because when I was ill, and I just was like a training plan. The wheelbarrow movement. Yeah, I was just. Out, I was getting out of breath super fast. That's how I knew I was ill. I would literally <laughs> do like shovel, fill one barrow, take it up, dump it, and then I'd just like all of a sudden. I'd realise how gassed I was, and then I'd have to take like a couple minutes where I'm just like, <sighs> second it up. and then yeah, then go at it and do it again. But yeah, so it wasn't wasn't too bad for me. Just one day of feeling shit, but it's more for the fact of I didn't want to pass it on to anyone else because like yeah, either way. stupid protocols. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, we've also realised that we need to bring back the fun. Because we realised not only is this like something we, we enjoy doing, but it's actually a reprieve. So this week, Ooh. oh yeah, the crew chest is open and it is full. It is full. I don't even know how you say it. I'm I don't even lie. know what it is because this is a loo one. And if yeah. I look at that really quickly, it says masturbation. Yes, <laughs> we've got a bottle of masturbation. M- mat- Matusalem. Matusalem. <laughs> <laughs> Is it from Arabia? Is it Arabia? Yes, it's in the right. No, is it's it not. from Arabian it's Nights? A, it's a, a Cuban rum. So this was one that got recommended to me. I don't know how you pronounce that. Machusalam? Machulus? Arabian Nights. Uh, Matusalam. Yeah, that does sound like Arabic. Yeah. Matusalam. M A T U S A L E M. It is. I think. I think the Cubans have invaded, stolen it, taken mm. it back, and gone. Yeah, I made it. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Did you really? Oh, I don't know what Cuban sound like. Oh, you want to do Tony Soprano? <laughs> yeah. Not those part. Tony Soprano. No, you want to do um, Montana? Spr- yeah, Tony Montana. Chocacaroche. Chocacaroche. Ron. It's called. Oh, it's no. a bloke's name. No, no, that a lot of them have it. It'll be like Ronda something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know the Ronda. <laughs> There's Rons running around Cuba. <laughs> what is your name? You know, you know, what, is your, what is your name? Ron. You know Cuban Ron? <laughs> Cuban Ron. You know him. Yeah, you, you've met him. Dresser Three Cuban Wheeler Ron. sells that Iranian rum. <laughs> You're a fucking sausage, you are. Because <laughs> that's the whole, you know, the Ron Jeremy rum. Yeah. Because like, that, that's a play on it. Because it's like Ron de Jeremy. Oh, I did not get that. There we go. Uh-huh. Well, this is actually decent. Okay, so this is a Grand Reserve, which means it's 15... 15 years old. Because you get the Grand 
crop and stuff like that with the French wines and stuff, mm. don't you? And the different crops are different values. Yeah. So whenever it's a grand something, you know, it's not too shabby. Yeah, so this one got recommended to me by, uh, funnily enough, the guy selling it. <laughs> Shocking that. I know. Yeah. He was Wouldn't like, funny see this in... one. You want this one. Absolute funny... shit. Yeah. <laughs> You went in the store and you went, see this one? Yeah, you don't fucking buy that shit. Terrible. How much have you got of it? Loads. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. <laughs> Never. <We're laughs> this is a, a 40 percenter. Mm. It's a 40%, so it's, it's a proper one, but it's not technically a spiced rum. Nope. Nope. So, but apparently, tell the people why that shouldn't matter. So he said, um, with some of the older, um, I don't know what, what the word is, like more matured, basically the ones that are aged a little aged bit longer, longer yeah. you can get away with it not being spiced. Like the spice will often cover up maybe cheaper quality rums, um, yeah. which is fine, obviously, like a nice spice rum's lovely, but it's that you uh, you can, you normally can get quite a nice pl- uh, flavour profile with some of the old ones, and again, depending on what they are. So we'll get, we'll go off uh, his see, recommendation. We'll do you see. like a rum? I do. I like a spice rum, but when it comes to the white rums and stuff, I'm a little bit more, my palate struggles. Yeah. I like the initial taste, but the back end's a bit weird. But this is what we're doing. So we're going to bring it back. We're going to get, bring back getting tipsy on the podcast, having a laugh, taking the piss, and not caring about being politically correct. Well, we definitely weren't politically correct on... Well, I say we. I was. You definitely weren't politically <laughs> correct no. on that. Uh, I'm quite proud of myself for that. Yeah, on that. Yeah. Uh, th- was that a short? Didn't even put a warning out. Oh, yeah, because you said you were going to put a warning. <laughs> and then, like, I watched it. I was like, no warning, no warning at all. I was like, do you know what? No. No, we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is come on here, say what we think, say dumb things. You guys can be like, that was dumb. Here's why. Or, ha, 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 that was dumb. I like it. And then that's how life is, isn't it? Because yeah. that's just life. You can't be too icky and serious or take too much offence because otherwise you would v- live a very boring and miserable life. Well, fucking hell, nowadays everyone gets offended from everything. Exactly, so. and we're nice human beings. We do nice stuff. So if we say the odd dumb thing, then I think you can forgive us for it yeah, or even exactly. have a chuckle alongside. You know what, actually, I kind of like this bottle. The more I look at it, it's actually quite smart. It's cool. It looks like something that you'd find in a the, an old wooden crate on a beach. Yeah, because there is actually, it's like a, a pirate map in the background. It is. It's like, very, you know, when you used to like the tea, tea stain your uh, stuff in history and yeah. like burn all the edges. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what, what it's it looks like. like. It's got like a proper rough edge, so it literally yeah. looks like it's it's weathered and aged. 15 years age, man. Can you imagine doing that, sitting there and being like, that would be great in 15 years? Yeah. Just a whole person's entire like, childhood yeah and you think as well there's going to be some of these people that are like doing this for a long time they're going to be they're going to be putting stuff in casks that they yeah. aren't going to see yeah <laughs> oh they're going to be like That's i'm true. going to be dead when yeah. this is good <laughs> <laughs> just like this one when, you, when you're bottling your yeah. last load like, yeah you're just yeah. like okay so we got some five years i'll see them we got some 10 years i might see them we got some 15s I'm done. probably going to be dead by then <laughs> but it's going to be our expensive one if so you, it's worth if it you're going to be dead by the 15 year one would you fuck up a few of the bottles? <laughs> just piss in the barrel. Just do something that leaves your like little chuckle of legacy behind. You yeah. don't have to fuck up what's inside it, but like maybe just do something to Dave some of the bottles. Dave, Ron was here. Yeah, just, just something. Inside the cap. Like, inside the cap or yeah. something like that. Ron was Put like here. a little thing in there. I definitely would. So It looks like a cork. It looks it, like a cheeky pop. It, I think it's like Better a... Better be. If it's like a twist a, top, I'm going to be super no, disappointed. No, no, it's... It looks like it's a wooden wooden top, and it's like stained purple. Oh, then crack it open, mate. All right, let's see. Crack it open. So saying? behind here, we've got our, oh. you know... Oh, it's pop. coming out quite easy, oh, there actually. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 uh, there was a bit of resistance, and then all of a sudden, it, it, it came loose. Oh, oh, that was a squeak and a pop. That's the know. best kind. That was like yeah, that. a bit of everything there. You sniff your cork. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It's got a bit of fruitiness. Maybe it has. That's quite sweet smelling. This is what people pay on for on podcasts to hear us inhaling nasally. I'm not even sniffing anything. I'm just no, sniffing the microphone. Sniffing. <laughs> mm, three week old breath. <laughs> yeah, my favourite. Mm. I, I remember what I ate before the last podcast. What did I eat before this? Oh, I had a, I had a tuna pasta, and then I followed it up with right. a protein pudding. From um, Aldi. Have yeah. you seen these things? Yeah, 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 They're good. Everyone loves them, yeah. Vanilla, chocolate, and caramel. Yeah, I haven't had any because of the, the amount of lactose in there. I'll probably <sighs> shit myself. You should try it, though, just to see. We've, we've got no ice anymore. It took us so long to get so organised. We've got, ice. like, it's the tiniest slither of ice, so we're going to do a, a little pour. This, for pour sure. To, this is a glugger. Yeah, for sure, it's a glugger. glugger. Here we go, and this is going to be a generous one. Oh, this is a three-week catch-up glug. Oh! 
<laughs> Gee, boy, you yeah, went in we hard. There we go. Oh. What's that? That is a generous quadruple. Oh, that is, uh, yes. A oh, quant- this yes. is a that's a quantuplet. Cheers, mate. Good to be freaking back. Charles. Good to be back. We've got so much to tell you guys. Some of it you're not allowed to know yet. Some oh, of yeah. it you'll find out later. We've got stuff to tell you that we can't that you tell can't you. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then um but it's catch ups. Let's do well, let's do France France trip. Yes. First, because this is something you've got to look forward to. And then we'll get on the puppy because I feel like the puppy's gonna take up quite a bit of question time. Uh, France trip. So what did we do? There were three of us. Yeah, go on. No, no, I was going to say, I'm, right. I'm really excited to know more because yeah. we've not, like, we were messaging a little bit, but not a huge amount. And then, yeah, it's just been med- mental the yeah, last few weeks. So. You actually said that looks sick. And I, yeah. like, and I, told, I think I sent you some, some stuff back about the reality. <laughs> yeah. It was cool, but then obviously there was the, the uh, well, we'll get into it. But so here's what it was. It was me and two of my buddies, Mark and Lee. Something cool happened before we even got going, right? So the boys are coming down the night before because they're coming from up north. So mm-hmm. riding down to mine, stay over at mine the night before, then zoop off at like 8 a.m. in the morning down to the ferry. We ended up getting the ferry because it was half the price of the tunnel. Fuck you, tunnel guys. You lost three tickets for three motorbikers that would have taken up less space than a car mm-hmm. because you doubled your prices coming into like three weeks with into the date line. Why would you do that? Mm-hmm. Makes no sense. So and actually the ferry turns out to be better. And I'll tell you why in a bit. But... Not because of the arcades. There's many things, many reasons. But so uh, Mark got here at his usual random time without telling me that he's going to turn up because he thinks that's funny. Yeah. He just loves to just rock up and be like, da, 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 da. he's a bit like, well, it's even funny actually. So imagine, remember that about Mark, that he turns up a little bit like an unwanted superhero. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. And then, so he comes up and then a few hours later, Lee's like, Lee's on his way. Lee pulls up. Now, do you remember Lee, what I told you before, he came, he used to have a blue VFR and then one time he rode down and I was riding out to get some petrol mm. and this beautiful old school 900, like CBR 900RR was coming the other direction. Yeah. I was like looking at the bike and it's like, yeah. oh, that's a gorgeous bike. And then on top of it was a waving idiot. Yeah, he's thinking it, that. And it was Lee yeah. because he told none of us he'd bought a bike. Yeah. He changed his bike and just <clears> rocked <throat> up on it. Guess what he did again? Really? He rocked up on a, on a Triumph Street, a speed triple. Right. So that's a 1050. That's a big boy bike. Wow. Okay. A big boy bike. And um, <laughs> the idiot bought this thing four days before the trip. We were doing 2,500. Oh, he God. was doing two and a half. No, 2,500 miles. I was going to say two and a half hundred. That was wrong. 2,500 miles on a bike he had owned for four days. And in the three days prior, yeah. the wreck reg went on it. Because so it wasn't charging its battery properly. Yeah. And in practice, there's a common thing that goes on a lot of bikes. So he'd spent three days frantically trying to wire in this new aftermarket wreck, re- which was on the forums telling him which ones to put in. But it meant wiring it. He'd mm. literally got it done two hours before it to set off to mine. Fuck. I know. So he rocked up on it. On this side, and obviously we were like, "That is sick," and it is a beautiful looking bike yeah. in, in real life. It, the pictures don't really do him justice because they got these like disconnected, weird dual headlights. Mm. But in real life, it looks really sexy. Yeah. This thing's like it has it had a belly pan on it as well, which finishes that bike off. And it was in like this bright orange, kind of burnt ready orange, mm. lovely looking thing, rapid too. Um, so that was that was great. But he also he's got exhaust under his seat, which meant he couldn't have panniers. <laughs> Because he'd have melted them. Yeah. <laughs> so he turned up with what essentially was the world's tallest tail bag. That you've ever, and I mean, like, it was a foot and a half high. <laughs> he was so much so, he's like, he, he, had to, uh, he had to take off, off of where it was a backpack. Oh, really? Yeah, it was, like, ridiculous. And he put some of his stuff in mind because I've learned about biking. Yeah. I've learned you never need to take what you think you need to take. Yeah. Take, pack it and then get rid of half of it. Yeah. That's what you do. Or like plan out what you need and then get rid of half of it. Yeah. And what you do, this is a trick, and it's going to be a trick if you're going camping or whatever, pack shit you don't care about anymore, mm-hmm. including your underwear, socks, and T-shirts. Yeah. And after you've worn it on one or two days, bin it. Yeah. So you get lighter as you go on yeah. and more space. Yeah. It's a brilliant plan. I got rid of loads of crappy underwear with holes in it and stuff. <laughs> and, and the whole time you're wearing it, you're like, you know, you can just be a bit bummy. Yeah. You don't care. You're yeah. Like, yeah. So you don't care if it gets like sweated in, rained on, whatever. Yeah. And you're in leather, so you look cool on the bike. Underneath, you're just a, like a hobo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the leather's like sealed in the stench <laughs> yeah. as well. Just like t- duct taping up the sleeves and stuff <laughs> so, so it can't walking. escape. Yeah. yeah. So I, I got some room in mine, so Lee put some stuff in there and we had all our tools in there. But I'd just done all my sprockets and chains, so we had to take with us big spanners 
to like loosen the back wheels off mm-hmm. uh, to be able to retighten the chains yeah. as you go because they stretch like within the first 300 miles they, they move like a lot yeah. so you have to tighten them up every kind of 100 or so miles so we were kind of a rolling tool kit yeah. by the end because because Lee because he got the new bike and was a bit frantic that something had gone wrong he brought everything you could think of to fix it <laughs> that would fit in this tool. he had like no clothes yeah. and just tools yeah that's hilarious <laughs> all he brought was underwear and socks and, like that was it and the rest was tools um, so we set off we, and we set off on time we were on time even I packed and was ready like Holy ready shit. to go that's how excited I was yeah and um, so we, we set just, off we have oh, a sip of this? the ice yeah. is completely gone so okay, yeah before so we get into the, the depths of the story chin chin hit this is the Iranian Cuban rum yeah this is Ron's rum oh wow that's smooth oh wow that's smooth oh that's delicious Hey, you picked a good one there. Yeah, that's that is nice. really good. Ooh, what, what is that? that? So it's it is. There's little spicy notes down the side. Yeah, a real sweetness over the front, and a very little heat. There's like a, a slight medicinal kind of like you know that sweet mm. I don't know, like sweet medicinal kind of flavour. You know, with like the, the, with, that's not white rum though, is it? No. So with the white rums, I get this weird kind of after taste at the back of my throat. Which is what puts me off them. It's like you said, it's a little bit medicinal, mm. but it's not not a, ple- not a pleasant right, yeah. way for me with the white ones. Yeah, the darker whatever it is, I don't know if it. Do we have? I don't know if it's tannins the same as wine that causes it, but I'm not sure. that has zero kind of lingering flavor at the back of your throat. Everything's on the tongue. Oh, it's really yeah. nice and it's really sweet, sweet, really smooth. Even oh, I've got a second sip coming. Mm-hmm. In. I reckon this is going to be even better. Oh, that is delicious. Oh, I think that goes down as one of my favourite rums ever. Well, that's gorgeous. Every year was worth that one. Mm. That's so easy to drink. Yeah. Thanks, Ron. Well done, Ron. <laughs> Cuban Ron. <laughs> Good old Cuban Good old Ron. Cuban Ron. With his tea-stained lettering. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's, that's dangerous. Mm. Good job we poured a hefty one out. I know. Right, back to story time. Oh, no, not back to story time. Let's pop out a cigar. Do stuff properly. This is what Fridays are about. Hedonism. <clears throat> so we're uh, we, we're probably going to hit more than these today because we're going to go and yeah, we're going to celebrate a few things afterwards with some um, Juliets, which I've been keeping for a special occasion. Oh, you want to? So these oh, are. The thank bit. you very much. You're out. We went through these villages, you know. Oh, I gave you two boxes. Yeah, I've, I have. I'll uh, I'll bring one of the boxes back over. I keep have you handing them. No, I have oh. a few times. I keep thinking, oh, I'll go out and I'll go out and have one. A few times, you should when have, I, you should have when, celebrated your garden. When I had fucking COVID, I was there like bored, and I was just like, I might just go out for a Kill cigar. Kill COVID with a cigar. Yeah, I was just like, should I probably have a cigar if I've got COVID? Maybe. The only thing I don't get about these is, is there a front or a back? Because I think that feels like it's the back. It's hard to decipher because they're square as well. There's no like nipping. You can see very slightly at the back end of that one. It's nipped in ever so slightly. Different. Yeah. These villagers are the pressed. We've got the pressed ones, and they're like a square shape, which is kind of novel. But they do let a bit out the back. Mm, yeah, um, they when definitely you smoke them. They're quite bitty, but they do taste good. Oh yes! Oh, I've missed this. Lovely. So anyway, where are we at? We've taken off. We got off on time. Um, headed down to the ferry. Got on the no problem. Here's the cool thing I didn't realize. Because when you're on the ferry, we were like, right, we need to park together so the bikes don't, you know, wobble around, make sure that. When we got on there, they ratchet them down. You have these anchor points on the ferry and you get a strap over, you get like um, this cushion for your seat, goes on your seat and over that goes the ratchet strap and you just crank it down to the hull of the boat. It ain't going nowhere. Okay. Really good. And on the first way there, um, some bloke did it all for us. We just rocked up. Ratched them down. Then you tottered off upstairs. Took my laptop with me. We sat down. We got the world's stalest scone in the world. Like you could have thrown it at your enemy. Yeah. And it would have done some damage. Yeah, knocked them out. Um, with a, a coffee and just chilled out. And you get like a 90 minute crossing. So you get this. It took us five, four and a half hours to ride down to the ferry on the dullest ride you've ever seen. Yeah. All motorway, all horrible. Sucks balls. By the time we got there, we were like, that sucked balls. We're like, yeah, thank God that's done. <laughs> that's good. Um, so the reprieve of 90 minutes for sitting down on the ferry compared to standing by your bike in a train hole on the tunnel is yeah. actually way better. Yeah. And it turns out it's cheaper too. They used to uh, ratchet down the vans when we used to, because we used to go over to Ireland all the time working. And I think it's because the vans were so big and heavy 
that the handbrakes might fail on them and obviously they don't want you bumping oh. into each other, especially if it was Ooh. a bumpy crossing. They don't ratchet down the bloody lorries, do they? Yeah, I think they do. Do they? Yeah. Holy yeah. crap. They just go over the wheels. Because there were anchor points all along the whole yeah, floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. And um, I remember it one time... It makes sense. Rough seas, pin them I down. one time we, uh, we were anchored down. It was on the way back from Ireland, actually. And the person in the van in front, because they try and group everything together, like the vans would all kind of, if they could, get all the vans together, all the lorries together. Um, didn't come back, so everyone was fucking queued up waiting. And eventually they told us just to drive around. So we did, but we had to go over these chains... And about half an hour later, we had a blowout on the motorway because we think because you know they've got the, the in hooks. a van. You in a van? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think one of the uh, one of the hooks like must have damaged the wall of the tire, yeah. and then obviously Dodger. heating up on the on the motorway half an hour later. Yeah. Ooh, no. But anyway, yeah. So yeah, they ratchet down your bikes on the on things. That's cool. Totted off. Had a little thing. Um, funny thing though, getting onto the ferry. Right, we turn up, and now. Let's just say, you. So you, if you're going to go, if you've had your jabs, that's all cool. You've got your pass. You just show that at the gate. If you haven't, like me, if you're a tin 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 foil hat wearer like me, or you think you're superhuman like me, mm. you don't have the jabs because yeah. you're invincible. Hard as nails, mate. Hard as nails and invincible, right? Still don't think. I think I had COVID, like original COVID, mm-hmm. and all I did was lose my taste for a little bit. Yeah. So solid, hard as nails. Haven't had it since because it doesn't it doesn't dare come near me. Delta was like, sod that guy. Yeah. He just battered the first range. I want nothing to do with him. So I was like, that's that. So we get there. Now, let's say, so I did a lateral flow mm-hmm. when I went to Portugal for the retreat. Yeah. Now, let's just say that the lateral flow was a little bit undecided when you scanned. Like, so you have a, you have the thing that comes through. It tells you you've passed and you've not got COVID or anything. And then you get a scan through that says, you know, passed and clear. Mm-hmm. So I had all my that again ready to go yeah um you know that was it might have visited a shop of photos yeah M- maybe yeah who's to say who is to all say? i know is that when you scan the document yeah it takes you through to a confirmation page with no dates on it yeah so you know who's to, who's to, who's to say who knows when, right? when it was there all i know is it says i'm awesome yeah so I've got this awesome code, and but we rock up and we're at that literally at passport control, yeah. And I'm I like helmets off. We're looking still pretty, pretty cool at this point because you know we're, we're just on the fresh on the ride, so we're all tidy and neat and everything. We rock up, helmet comes off, beards out, hairs out. Yorkshire lads there, Mark <laughs> Lee's checking his bike's not on fire, <laughs> and then um, this bloke in a high vis comes over, to check the bikes out. He's like, we're off, dude, lads, off on a ride. We're told, yeah, it's all like that. And he goes, all right. And then he just turns to the French border control and goes, give these lads one of them stars. Give the lads the stars. And we're like, what, what, what's he doing? And we're like, and I'm looking at Mark. Mark's like, I don't know what he's doing. I'm like, he sounds like you, Mark. He's, he sounds Yorkshire. Do your Yorkshire. Do, do the man thing where you talk. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And I was like, he's like, no, you're wrong. He's completely Southern. I was like, I, I don't know. So. <laughs> and uh, anyway, it, it, this woman just hands me this paper. And I'm telling you, it's just literally a piece of paper with a star on it, a giant star. Yeah. About yay big. Yeah. yeah? Pretty much. So the, as big as, what would you say that is? Like a small dish. Yeah. yeah? And in the corner of it, it just says Irish ferries. That's who we're traveling with. Uh, okay. And then he goes, two more. They need two more. And they're like, no, no. And he's like, oi, two more, lads. They need two more. And we're just, let, this bloke is now arguing <laughs> with the French border control. <laughs> no. Just the bloke. And he's like, no. He's like, yeah. And then this other bloke pops his head out of a, a, a you know, it's like a cabin, isn't it? That you rock up to with this like barrier on it. Apparently there's two floors in it because his little head pops out the top of this slidey window with his like, like saying, oh, blah, sucker, blah, 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 blah. And he's going, oh, yeah, yeah, fucking, yeah, yeah, Yorkshire. Give him a fucking star, Fucking like. star. Give him a fucking like star. That. And they're all like, no, he's like, oh, hey, motherfucker, do you, do you want some? Do you want some? And eventually these two other stars appear out this win- window from this bemused looking French woman because yeah. it's actual French people at, at French border control in England. And then we just get given these stars and all three of us are like, well, that's one. He goes, all right, lads, have a great trip. Show the boys that down there and they'll let you straight through. I was like, what is he? He went, she COVID passed me. <laughs> He'd basically just been in the French going, these boys are fucking clean. You let them through. They don't need none of that fucking they got, proof. They got Give them the star paper. Let the fuckers through. They're on bikes. They're cool fucking. Those boys need a holiday. Yeah. And that's literally what they did. So we nobody asked a shit yeah. about any of our codes. So Mark was like, I paid £35 for my flat reflect test. 
<laughs> when all high, he, he's fucking high. He could have yeah. kiboshed the lot. He, he could have just fucking printed off, uh, printed off a picture printed of a star. Off, literally, a, a star on a piece of paper. An outline of a star and piece. So that must have been their code for the week of yeah. like they've got their they've had their jab. Yeah. But it literally was a code saying we'd been jabbed. Mm. We had not. I haven't. Mark hasn't. Only Lee had. Yeah. So we just rocked up. Show these star pieces of paper. Security control at um, ferries. By the way, mm. you can definitely carry contraband because we rocked up. And he goes, "Have you got?" a gun in there or have you got any sharp knives or any of these things on a picture so there's like you know knife scissors a goat a rocket launcher mm-hmm. Saddam Hussein's corpse uh, no, none of that in there so I just, I just and I said he said can I have a quick look and obviously the panniers are quite heavily packed zipped it open it's like you can see pants and socks mm-hmm. that's what, and then like a boom like I took the wonder boom with me the speaker because I thought that was important um I actually did because we did some meditation on one of the mornings, which was cool to have that. Uh, and I said, oh, there's a, some tools in there and a, a, just a 22. And he went, right, I went, spanner, not the gun. He went, thanks for clarifying. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, on your way, sunshine. Oh, yeah. There could have been any kind of weaponry in there. Mm. I could have had a mace, crossbows. They didn't check shit. Yeah. I just pointed out Trebuchet. stuff. That, I just pointed out stuff in there that wasn't a weapon. Yeah. And he was like, you're right, that's not a weapon. They're not weapons. Yeah. They're Don't pants. look at the knife, look at the Wonder Boom speaker. Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah you can't hurt pump, anyone with that. Underpants in there. In fact, you're probably going to cheer people up with the amazing bassy sound for only £60 from Amazon. I was like, <laughs> off you go, lads. Yeah, so that was it. Off we're, off we're on the ferry with uh, zero checks, pretty much, of any kind of weaponry or vaccinations. It was mm. brilliant. And then when you drive off to the side, nobody does shit because you, you've already passed border control in our country. Oh, yeah. So you just ride off into the horizon. It was great. And then obviously no checks when you come back into the UK. So yeah. we were home free the whole time. So that was amazing. And then we jetted off into the north of France and we quickly found a like, nice little route down uh, the coast and we made really good time. And um, I've realised... That the French roads, no, let's reverse that. British roads suck giant balls, mate. Mm. The only reason we think our roads are good is because we drive on them every day. We spent five days driving around France. Yeah. When we got back, the first thing we all noticed was a vibration through our feet when we we're on the bikes. Because our roads are so shit, they literally are like it's like driving over mini cobbles yeah. on the motorway. In France, I saw it so smooth. Yeah. And in our, the, their farm roads mm. are like our A roads, yeah. as in like quality. It's insane. You don't know how shit our roads are until you've driven over in France. Mm. That I don't care what you think of the French. Their roads are fucking immaculate. Fair and point. you can go on your bike there. We were beaning it around. Not at one point did I ever fear there being a pothole in the road running around the corner. Yeah. Not once. It's like in Scotland. I don't know how good it is, but like the Scottish roads are fucking ten times better than the really. Ones. Yeah, Scottish roads. Are, and same thing. Oh, there we go. That's our. Uh, that's our warning. Look We're it is. half an hour in. So yeah, the, uh, the the literally the little country lines in Scotland. Most of them, they're fucking better than better than our I roads. Well, you see, I went to Scotland for a bodybuilding show, and the roads were horrendous. Oh, really? Yeah. Where really, did go? Obviously, it's a big place, but no, Felix Stowe's down south in England, isn't it? Mm. Up, 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 up. It begins with S. Silver, silver. There's no point doing this. <sighs> you, you're good, aren't you? At geography? No, I'm terrible at geography. Oh, right, Just because no I've been everywhere, this. but 100% I don't no point doing this. Yeah, I, yeah. Anyway, carry on. Yeah. Um, good roads, yes. Amazing road. So, we, well, when you come off, what you do is you blast a bit of the um, old like autobahn esque places, and you just punch your way into the country because that's the best way. You just punch your way in, good couple of hours, hammer some distance. Mm. Then you because we got there at about f- obviously you get an hour back, don't you? Mm-hmm. When you come in, no, you get an hour. You go an hour forward. Is you go an hour forward or an hour back? No, because an hour forward. So we got there. At five-ish o'clock knowing we had light till nine so we had a good four hours of ride so like right let's just hammer that first day and it makes your second day a little bit easier yeah. so we punched our way down and we stayed at this um it was the best thing you can do in france right north of france there's nothing there yeah. but because there's nothing there you get these like farmhouses or random little villages in the middle of nothing and you can go on airbnb and you can get a place between we got a place between three of us for the first night that had the comfiest beds ever it was this entirely converted farmhouse with this one little couple there. I think if you watch my Instagram stories, you'd have seen it. It was stunning. Manicured gardens all the way around. Mm. Uh, they cooked us breakfast in the morning. Uh, we had an entire like house to ourselves. Yeah. They were like living in an annex, and we had the rest of the house. Wi-Fi and everything going on. The French also, Wi-Fi fucking everywhere. Mm. And I mean like 30 to 40 uh, meg downloads. Yeah. 
everywhere. Nice. Fucking everywhere. We stayed in a country house that didn't even have people around it. Yeah. And it had 40 meg download. Better than what me. the fuck? Yeah. Like, old Sandra down the road, who's been living in a cottage forever at a bloody day, has still got dial-up. Yeah. Like, unbelievable. We're fucking backwards. Mate, there's like... some shit going on in this country. Yeah. So, we stayed, after all the boys were like, t- so I spent hours researching these fucking places to stay on, on the Airbnbs, because I know what riding on tours is like. You want a good bed. You don't have a good bed. You're going to feel it by yeah. the, the second day. Yeah. Whereas the other lads were like, oh, as long as I've got something flat to lie on and a window and a shitter, yeah. I'll be fine. Yeah. Like, you fucking won't. So they're sending through like these dog ass places. Yeah. And um, so obviously they had a lovely sleep and a lovely breakfast, although there was a little bit of a little bit of aggro on the first evening when we got there because Mark was tired because he hadn't slept because for whatever reason, he just doesn't like sleeping sometimes. He just, his brain over think stuff and he mm. just can't sleep um lee was on this uh, one of the uh, like sofas downstairs so we ran out of beds um but a big comfy sofa it's been like a chaise long mm. so it's decent enough but still it's not a bed and so when we got there one of the boys was like well doubles mine enjoy your because we got we, everywhere we went there's usually a double and then two singles because it's just the way they work yeah, out yeah. some of them had two doubles whatever but you just make the best of what you can for the budgets and uh the singles are fucking they were so comfy but you were sharing a room then together mm. But simply because one of the boys had been like, that's mine, that put everyone's backs up. Yeah. Because everyone was like, well, fuck you, because we've all ridden the same distance at the same time and done the same shit. Yeah. Why do you prioritize it? So I had to sit everyone down on the first evening and be like, you come to me on this day. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I had to godfather it. But basically, when you do these tours, they're not a fucking holiday. Like, don't get me wrong, they're a great time away. You have, like, when, when you sit back and, and think through everything that you've done in the short time you're there, mm. it's incredible, like, what you see and what you get through and, and the, the distance you cover. But it's, imagine riding it's a horse taxing, for three hours. Yeah. That would not, so imagine being on a bike for eight and you're doing that every day yeah. with just a lunch break and a couple of stops in the way. You try and stop every two hours for like 15 minutes just to Switch just to get you off the bike. And, yeah, move around. Yeah, and just re-engage your brain, get it, you know, stop it going to sleep. Yeah. So I had to sit him down and be like, listen, this isn't a fucking holiday. This is a challenge. Yeah. And you got to re, you got to stick your brain like this is a fucking challenge. We've got to work as a team. Like, We've got to work as a team so that nobody loses the keys. Everyone's got everything shit packed in the morning. Everything's ready to go. Timing's on schedule. Somebody's doing the distance. Somebody's doing the timing. Someone's finding a place to eat. So once we got that out of the way and everyone was like sat down nodding, we're like, oh, yeah, sorry, boys. Everyone was like, yeah, so we're all a bit fucking cranky. We're all like, it's all right. And then we sorted it out. It was great from then on. But if you hadn't done that on the first night, just had that manly chat. Yeah, it would have been awkward. There'd have been this undertone of, of, fuck you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you ain't getting a fucking good bed tomorrow. But everyone's bed was great. You know, there was no reason for it. It But it was just one of those, you know, when people get tired and cranky, it's all like, oh, fucking look out for yourself kind of attitude starts coming in with everyone. Yeah. Makes me wonder, like, it makes perfect sense that it is really fucking hard on your body. But uh, makes me think about, like, you know, we spoke about fucking Charlie Borman and Ewan McGregor doing that long way around and the way down. They fell out a few properly, yeah. a, few, a few times on that. And like, they were gone for months, right? They were riding. Oh, they were gone for nine months. On yeah, the they, were, one, they were riding for ages. Yeah, like, they were, they're they're literally gone. crossing the world. <laughs> so, yeah, I think uh, that puts it into perspective as well. Just oh, like yeah. how taxing that would have been. But I need to why... try and find that and watch that again. I don't know oh, what that's I've on. watched it so many times. Have you? They've done the long way. Long way round. Long, long, then it was long, long way, way round. Long way up, long way down, and then things done three. The last one sucks because they're on electric Harley. Yeah, it's the stupidest idea. They're basically riding at sixty miles an hour everywhere each day to find a fucking plug. It's shit. Where was the one where they're in the middle of nowhere and they come across this like arms dealer or something like that, and they're at there and they they get invited back to the house and they've just all oh. they're all there with like AK forty sevens and stuff. It's like. fucking brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And the dude's like just goes and gets guns. Yeah, from isn't upstairs. it like Kazakhstan or somewhere it's like somewhere that? Somewhere mad like that. Yeah, and, and yeah, the just... dude turns out to be some kind of like head of some kind of guerrilla kind of style. Yeah, it's like a mercenary gang. or something. Yeah. and yeah, and they just bring him out and they're showing them all these like guns and they're just like firing off and then yeah. like afterwards they're like. We might they could have, murdered. yeah, they could yeah. like kill us or yeah. they could take us hostage. They weren't, they were just the loveliest people ever. Yeah, who they gave them a bed for they no had a great reason. time, yeah. yeah. Fed them, gave like, oh. let them shoot guns, and, and then they're so proud of their country. And that was yeah. all they wanted to show them was just the things from their country, and part of that was the guns. Mm. Yeah, but what a great experience we did. So, to, to make like, so to cut it all short, we did 
a five day trip. We covered like nearly two and a half thousand miles. The boys, I covered 2,200 and something. The boys did two and a half because they obviously had back and forth from coming up north, which is mm-hmm. about 90 to 100 miles each way. Mm-hmm. Um, we rode all the way down the west coast. So we came from Calais, we rode through. We were supposed to go to this um, city thing where it's like a, a city that gets uh, blocked oh, by yeah, the tide. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We found out when we got there, we did ride all the way there. You can't take any vehicles on there. So you have to park all your vehicles up and then get a ferry over right. or whatever. But you can't take a bike or car over there. We're like, well, we're not leaving our bikes yeah. with all our panniers and all our valuables in a car park mm-hmm. to jump on a ferry. So actually that sucked a little bit. We still got to see it. So then we went for a really nice lunch on the coast instead. Uh, which was which was just you know it was just as good. But these are all things that you learn on the way that some of your plans don't materialize. Yeah, you know, it's always going to happen, isn't it? Then we stayed in this old town called Camper um, for one of the evenings. That was beautiful. Um, Lee, who's been on the podcast, uh, he adjusted his protocol for you know because he's on TRT. Mm-hmm. So he did his um, HCG as one hit, and he's not been doing that. He's been doing my everyday hits mm-hmm. and i was saying how well, we're not doing that we're doing that once a week bang yeah. done and uh he's like oh, i'll give it a go i think that actually because it's obviously estrogen it boosts estrogen doesn't it i think that with the fact he was worrying about his bike sent him into a minor panic attack on one of the evenings yeah because he was just like i think my hormones are out of whack yeah. so i felt really emotional <laughs> and he woke up next I morning you guys. Yeah, oh. he was all right but he was just super he said i got real anxiety like mm-hmm. like started to go like a bit like had to do my breathing and everything he said I just need to be on my own yeah. he's put calming music on and he was wrecked he hadn't slept properly and he just mm-hmm. fell asleep from like 10 o'clock until 8 the next morning and yeah. he was fine I was like you were just knackered mate Yeah, knackered and he was constantly worried because he thought he thought his bike was going to do this thing where it wouldn't charge so one time we were in this little town we pulled over to check where we were supposed to be going mm-hmm. and here, all we hear through the comms is Lee going oh shit we're like what won't start and this is on the first day mm-hmm. we're like oh shit so we're off our bike, get off our bike, side of the road, get down to Lee's. We're looking at everything. There's just nothing coming. He's hitting the starter. There's nothing happening. So like WD-40 in it. Maybe it's just like a bit sticky. Maybe it's missing a connection. Fuck. And he's like, fuck, fuck, fuck. And I'm like, okay, well, have you got have you got AA? Have you got all this? We took it into that. And then about partway through this conversation, working out how we're going to get this bike towed somewhere or do something, Lee just goes, ah, oh, shit. And like, what's happened now? He went, it's in gear, boys. <laughs> <laughs> he forgot to knock it into neutral. When you put a bike in, not in, not in neutral, it will not do shit unless you pull the clutch in. Right. Because obviously the stand's down, it's in gear, it's not going to start because it would launch itself. Yeah, fire off. So it's a safety mechanism. Yeah. So he literally just in this blind panic forgot it was in gear because his, his whole focus was on the fact that this bike probably won't start at some point. Yeah. And it was fine the whole trip. Yeah. We had this moment at the end of it we were like, whoa, smack him on the head. Like, yeah. And it was fine the whole time. Yeah. But that was a funny moment. You know, we had this moment, oh, fuck, it's the first day in mm. already. Yeah. Already, but no, it was a good. And um, we ended up anyway, we got all the way down to Bordeaux, went through all the coastal, went through this lovely little old town camp, camp, camp here, and then rode down to Bordeaux to stay. With, um, we stayed in a flat there, worst beds ever, yeah. but city centre apartments always yeah. were. Every bed so was So your sister, bowed. right? So we saw my sister, yeah, who I haven't seen. I haven't seen in Bordeaux, and she's been there for four and a bit years now. I've never been over. Yeah. Because COVID fucked things up as well for two and a half years, whatever. So yeah, she met us, took us around the whole city. We spent two days with her. Possibly the hardest two days of the entire trip. Really? We did 20,000 steps a day. <laughs> <laughs> Bordeaux's beautiful though. Yeah. What an amazing city. Everywhere you go as well, a fucking cathedral. Mm. Every picture I take when I'm eating something like a pizza, yeah. cathedral, croissant, cathedral, coffee, cathedral. <laughs> this is everywhere. It's like they just went on a building, like just somebody had a competition. Yeah. You could build the best cathedral. Yeah. <laughs> every every bloke on every street was yeah. like, oh, I want a, I want a cathedral on my street, <laughs> pretty much. And um, yeah, so it was great. She is so fluent. Yeah, like she's like a local, and we're like, je me ballet, <laughs> Lex, <laughs> and she's like, I should come Yeah, c'est toi idiot. <laughs> so she was great and we went to all the little local places we ate duck on a boat in the water in the harbour we had steak in front of this cathedral in the middle of the big square in Barcelona we were drinking at 1am red wine in this beautiful um, like uh, public square with this huge monument at the bottom of it all lit up mm-hmm. also can we say not a single lout in sight 1, 2am in the morning everybody's still just nattering happily tiddling away on their wines not one prick in sight yeah. England you have a lot to catch up on not a problem in an entire city the whole time I was there as well though it's just because because the, alcohol so 
accepted from yep. like a, a young age as well, isn't it? It's it's a it's not a it's almost because it's not held back from people. They don't feel the need to indulge. It is just they, it is honestly, what it is. Just enjoy it. Yeah. They order what they fucking like the taste of instead mm. of buying a beer, drinking a quarter of it, and then pissing off, pissing off with your mates, pussying off with your mates because mm. you think you should drink it. Order a fucking pink drink. If you want the pink drink, order the fucking pink drink. Mm. Enjoy what you're paying for. Stop being a pussy because your mates might say something. I went out on a stag do and I, ref- I fucking hate beer. Don't like it. I will try it every mm. time. If it's an, oh, it's, you'll like it, Lex. All right, get me the half in. I'll try it. Guarantee I'll get a quarter way through it and I'm like, I'm done. Mm. Like, unless that first few crispy sips are nice. Yeah. After that, aftertaste. The aftertaste I get from beer is weird. It's like the rum thing. Yeah. It's obviously my palate. Mm. So on the stag do, I was ordering pink drinks. So this round of beers that come with a pink drink in the middle, I was like, ooh, who's all of that? But I was one of the bigger lads mm-hmm. there in comparison to a normal, these are normal guys, not yeah. fitness dudes. So they, were, they weren't too forward at taking a piss yeah, yeah. because we, we didn't really, it was a mixed stag where I was really good friends with the guy getting married, but these were his other friends, you know, yeah. like that. So they were like, really pink drink? I was like, yeah, fucking pink drink. And obviously when you go, yeah, fucking pink drink, they're like, oh, we don't care. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which I didn't. And then they were like, what is it? And I was like, oh, it's a cider of this and that and the other. I like, try it. Yeah. All right, yeah. Oh, it's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Three yeah. rounds in, that's three pink drinks on the tray. Yeah. Oh, five rounds in, there's about six pink drinks on the fucking tray. Yeah. So it's just that thing of breaking that boundary. Mm. And because me, the most more Mac bloke, beard, muscle, tattoos, mm. soft man drink. Yeah. But because he did it, oh, fuck well, if he, you know, he's doing it. I think most people, they're just, it's almost like they're, they're just too, it's not the social thing, it's more that they just don't want to experiment. Well, no, They're it's a like, social thing. It's a peer pressure to drink a beer because you're a bloke. I don't know. I, it's I think always going to be some thing. people Mate, that are like that. But I've worked, on, I've worked on the doors. I've worked on the doors for five years. Yeah. Trust me, the amount of blokes I've seen order a pint, sip it at the bar, and I mean sip like freaking ooh, little pussy sip. Ooh, 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 ooh it's, it's bubbly. Mm, pussy sip. <laughs> like you're drinking a fucking champagne that you've paid eighty quid for the glass, and you want it to last as long as fucking possible. <laughs> Their other mates are like, fucking beer, because they genuinely like it, yeah. you know, or, or they just want to get pissed in their neck and whatever the fuck's in front of them. They will drink, I'm not kidding you, a, less than an, a tenth of the fucking pint. They will happily leave that pint in the bar and go to the next one. Yeah. That motherfucker don't want to drink me. And I tell you, out of 10 lads doing that, three or four of them, three of them at least will be like that. Really? Oh. Uh, yeah, I saw it all the time. I used to point out to the lads, look, he mm. fucking hates drinking that. And we'd watch him and laugh. So, so I'd be like, why doesn't he just order the fucking baby sham? Yeah. Like, just fucking do it. Apple teeny, please. Apple fucking teeny. <laughs> Easy on the teeny. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, so, and honestly, that is most most people. Mm. And they just keep plowing through until they kind of like the taste of the beer, maybe. But they're definitely not enjoying it. Like, I guarantee when you go home, they're drinking like some fruity thing. Mm. That's, or wine. Yeah. Whatever. And so don't be that guy. Listen, order the fucking pink drink. When someone's got a pink drink, go, yeah, because I fucking like it. What are they going to say to you? When you sent me that photo of you with the with the red wine, because I love a bit of red. Oh yeah. And uh, I went out and got a bottle that night. So oh, I, was just like, I, I forgot how good. When it's especially in France, you can't go wrong. Mm. they not nobody stocks a bad. Like nobody myself. stocks a bad red. Yeah. Mm. These do go out a bit, don't they? They do, mate. Yeah, you got to keep them going. Yeah, nobody stocks a bad red. So all you ever do is order the house red. There, it's like four euros for a large glass of house red, or you can pay like nine euros and get half a craft. Which Lee and I, so Mark's a beer boy. Mark likes his beer. So everywhere we, he went, he got a beer. Oh, by the way, we've got one beer. It was called Hard Cock. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a picture of us with a, a hard cock in our hands. <laughs> well, sure, nice it's not cold the first. hard cock. There's nothing like a cold hard cock with your pizza nope. to end a day's riding. And um, so he would always want to be because he generally likes it. But Lee and I, we, we would split like a half craft of of red wine or a bottle of red wine we'd order a bottle in if we were there for a few hours mm-hmm. and it was great it would cost like literally six euros each yeah that was it maybe less like it, it was so nice and every single wine I knew I'd like because we were ordering the base level of it which I know is going to be fruity and soft yeah so it was it was a great time so yeah I spent the time with Bordeaux in my sister two days lovely um, got to tell her some great news um, as well which you know she was ecstatic for mm. little things you guys will find out soon uh ish maybe don't know how i'm gonna do that but yeah anyway um so you know I, I, we all had a little family on facetime because it was the first time i've been with my sister in bordeaux so everyone was like we're eating duck on a boat with my mum and all my sisters on the phone yeah just everyone like it was just a nice Which sister thing. have i met this sister because i've no, met, she's not I've met one of your sisters i think you might have met tash so i got yeah, three sisters tash. i've got 
uh, Tash, who's in London working for BT, she's like the super brainy one who like in the business side. Yeah. Uh, Fia is the one in Bordeaux. Sophia, she has uh, it's called the Bordelais, which is her tour. She's basically got her own little tour company going there, and she's like the number one ranked tour guide in Bordeaux and private tour guide in Bordeaux. Oh wow! So she takes families, like rich families and stuff, around there who want like an in-depth personal experience and stuff. So she's doing really well. Although she does live in a shoebox, but she's just not materialistic at all. So she's like, this is all I need. So why would I live in anything bigger that costs me more? Yeah. And like, it's so funny because when you walk in her door, <laughs> she's put a clothing rail as you walk in the door. So it's like you walk into a closet, go through the clothing and come out into a really shit Narnia. <laughs> But there's cats there. Yeah. So it's like a super shit Narnia. Yeah. <laughs> instead, like... of, instead of Mr. Fucking Tumnus or whatever it's called. Yeah, instead of Tumnus, you've got, um, what's the fucking thing called? I don't know, but it scratched the shit out of me. <laughs> She's like, hold it, it's fine. It loves everyone. Immediately kicked Mold. me in the face. Yeah. Kicked me in the face with his paw and scratched my face. Nice. Yeah. It was just like, nope. Not it was you, like, motherfucker. Je n'ai pas de lex. Yeah. yeah, none of that. Um, so... She's, she's, yeah, she's doing really well. I've lost my train of thought. But so we spent, yeah, so we had all our family time there with her. That was really nice. And then we set off and then we blasted back up through the center of France to come back through to get to Calais to get home. Um, and we stopped again in, in like a place that was in the middle of nowhere for the final, one of the final nights. Um, and it was really nice. Like, you know, we had our own entire house to ourselves um, with like Wi Fi, huge garden with like a, gazebo thing outside and everything and um yeah it was really it was a, a really great experience really really fun tough really tough like we got back oh yeah fuck you irish ferries four hour delay on the way back and they fucked everyone because they said there was a problem with the weather we were like well that's a lie everybody knows it isn't and what they'd done is they didn't have enough diesel to run their ferries or it cost them too much so they cancelled our ferry and the what, and then put us on the next one, and then cancelled the one after it, and funneled everyone on the one after it into this middle one. Yeah. So they cancelled two ferries either side of the one we were on, and shoveled everyone onto one ferry because they wanted to save on fucking diesel, and then blamed it on like weather or whatever it was. But they mm. messed up their fueling, and then saw a way of making a massive saving. Yeah. We know what you did. We know Irish ferries, and you're getting a complaint letter coming your way to get my money back. They left us on a... So we had just gone through border control on the way back. Bearing in mind, we'd hammered it on the last... So we'd hammered it the day before. We did a solid like eight or nine hour day the day before, but through kind of really scenic routes yeah. so that we'd enjoy just being on the bikes. It wasn't anything about stopping and seeing anything. It was about seeing when we were on the bikes. So it was nice when we were fast roads and doing all that kind of stuff, but still nonetheless knackering. So what you don't want after that is to then be stuck on a fucking port for four hours in 27 to 30 degrees of heat in fucking bike gear with no water and no nothing, which is exactly what happened to us. Guess when they sent us the warning for the fact it was going to be delayed to tell us that we didn't have to check in until half five? Definitely last minute. Like. <laughs> so we were checking in at uh, three o'clock and uh, we got the warning at, oh no, we were checking in at five to three mm -hmm. and at three o'clock we got a text message through saying that it's delayed and we didn't check until like five o'clock. <laughs> cunts knowing full well that they told you to turn up at three o'clock to check in uh to check in so you at that track if you've already checked in you can't you, go anywhere. You, you have to be there now you're locked in and they fucking knew that so they could have sent this thing hours they knew hours and hours before so we could have gone up to the coast and had a nice lunch so we were pissed on the last way back i know they got in a fight on the ferry when the bloke told us we couldn't have as many water because they got we got meal voucher from the ferry yeah. Told us we couldn't have as uh, I picked up like six waters. So I was like, "Fuck these guys! We've yeah. had no water or anything. Yeah. We've been out there, and we've got this meal thing for a meal, a dessert, and like a diet coke or coffee or whatever you wanted yeah. from the go grabby stuff on the you know canteen stuff." Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "And I'm taking two bottles of water for each of the boys as well." When we got mm -hmm. to the till, he was like, "Oh, you can't do that." I went, "Let me tell you what we can fucking do." By the way, at this point, I'm fully. In a, I mean, in a, what can only be described as a schmedium grey sweaty t-shirt. Yeah. I've been in 27 degrees of so my veins are out and I'm pretty pumped from carrying like sh ratcheting the bike in from downstairs and then carrying all our shit upstairs yeah. looking juicy I've got my hair in what can only be described as a Viking-esque ponytail because I had three headbands going in it so that it wouldn't get like knotted when I'm riding and uh, and I'm pretty sweaty mm -hmm. and I was, I was like let me fucking tell you what we can't what we can and can't do what we can do is be left in the fucking sun for four hours on a fucking dock cooking with no water 
And what you can't do is stop me taking these waters back to that table for the boys and me to drink, to rehydrate for the four hours we were left on a dock. And if you've got a problem with that, mate, I'm going to be sat right fucking there and you can send someone over to have a chat with me. Yeah. And then I walked off with all the food and all the water. Yeah. And nobody said a fucking thing. <laughs> but there were a lot of people doing this face. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. The angry beard man going inside the fight. Yeah. <laughs> and I think they settled themselves in like, do we have popcorn? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was fucking pissed. Yeah. I was like, don't you dare tell me I can't. Like, we, cause, but we were dead. We left for yeah. four hours, mate, in this baking sun. Yeah, fucking man paying three euros for a bottle of water from the fucking vending machine. Like, yeah. that's a five minute walk where you can get fucked. Yeah. You should be bringing us waters, not some shit cunt meal voucher. Yeah. Be, have, you know. I was anyway. like, that's the fucking least they can do. Yeah. So. Mm. Yes. Well, so it was a shit ending, but well, it was actually it was really funny because when we got back, we had to um, we were going to do a really nice ride back and avoid the motorways and just take an extra hour to get back. But obviously, instead of getting back at four at ten to five, we ended up getting back at nearly gone eight uh, towards nine o'clock at night. By the time we were so we had no light left, so we just had to hammer motorway all the way back. I think we we took an A road for the first forty five minutes until it got dark, and then jumped on the motorway. Just did so the boys it, come back to yours and stuff here. So or Lee they? did, but Mark because of the split because he goes up to Manchester. There's like a Y point when you come past London, yeah. And he went off at that point to head up to Manchester because it would have been twenty minutes more on his journey to get back to Manchester uh, yeah. than coming back. So we've been an hour and a half back from mine. So, um. On the way back, it got. We didn't get home until that half two in the morning. That's how bad it was. So we must have half two. So it's about four and a half hours. So yeah, we uh, about four hours. So we didn't get until gone eight o'clock when we were supposed to be in at like twenty past four. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. So the um, the funny thing was though, we were like, well, because of this, we're getting an, a cheeky McDonald's on the way home with all the bad stuff, milkshakes. Yeah. I'm dipping my chips in the milkshake. Yeah. Two double cheese, so just filth. fucking just filthing it up. Got to the McDonald's where we kind of were like, I'm going to die soon. Are you going to die soon? Cool. Right, my sister, McDonald's stop. Pulled in, get to the door. Like, fucking this is it, lad. We're going to uh, tuck in here. Get ready to unzip your jacket. Yeah. Door's locked. Little note on the door. The current restaurant is closed, but the drive through is still open. I took one look at Lee. I took one look at the bikes. We looked at each other and we nodded. We did a McDonald's drive through on the motorbikes. Nice. Oh, yes. Nothing was stopping us. Yeah. They had some tables outside. So we're like, all we've got to do is make it through. we yeah. just got to make it through. We turned up at the hatch yeah. on, the, on the motorbike. The woman walks over. There's one look at me and just starts laughing as she hands me the drink over. And yeah. I'm like, oh, yes, we're doing this. She's yeah. like, good luck. And so we made my milkshake. <laughs> yeah. The trick is, I figured that she gave me a bag. I put the milkshake in the bag with the food, mm -hmm. screwed the bag up and dangled it off the throttle side. Yeah. And oh, I think I kept it on the tank or bounced on my chest and then just like trickled my way out, yeah. like riding around into the car park, parked it up and got out. And then Lee comes flying around the corner. He'd gone for the opposite because he bought a hot drink. Yeah. So he couldn't put it in there. <laughs> so he's got one drink on his clutch side, his bag in his other hand, and he just comes kind of semi flying around the corner being like, I'm not quite sure how to stop. <laughs> he's just like trying to not stall it while it's breaking and everything. Oh, it's brilliant. So we sat and had that and then we got home probably about, I don't know, gone two o'clock it was, definitely. <laughs> we sat outside. I took one look at I was like, whiskey and cigar? I was like, fucking yes, mate. Yeah. So we sat outside, out on whiskey and a cigar, and just listened to the silence and the sky. It was, good. It was a nice finish. Yeah, that sounds good. It at least, good... yeah, it's wrapped it up nice and nice It was a good and, finish. Uh, yeah. Chilled. Is it all the adventure, isn't it? It's shit at the time when stuff goes wrong, but, um, you know, it's all part of the past. Of when you look back, it's kind of funny. Your uh, Mackie's drive through story just reminded me of one time when I was a kid. Like, we were we were at school. I don't remember. Like yeah, probably like fifteen something like that. And the regular McDonald's was closed because it was late because we'd been out drinking. Um, it was only the drive through. Probably eleven. Out yeah, drinking. Six. Say so, ah, drinking. Probably four. Uh, no, it's probably like fifteen. <laughs> we're on the cow pole. Yeah, probably like fifteen something like right. that. And um, yeah, the the you, it was only drive through. So we were just like, oh fucking all right, we'll we'll just try walking through the drive through to see if they see if they let us. That was my next attempt. Yeah. If you'd go, yeah. So, so they, did you so they, do the bruh, 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 bruh? no, no, we didn't. So we got there. <laughs> they and they refused. They, the the girl refused to serve us. So we can only we can only um, serve you if you're in a vehicle. And we we're like, oh fucking Why? hell! We, I don't know. I have no idea. So we we walked off, 
I guess just to stop people walking through. Yeah, randomly. and I suppose it's probably health and safety or something like that. It's bearing in mind it's the middle of the night, so it was like no, dead. There. there was no yeah. one else there. Twenty minutes later, we'd found a shopping trolley <laughs> and, and came back. <laughs> one of us sat in the shopping trolley. I was pushing it along, and then put the order through, and then. <laughs> Because they've, they've got a camera so they can see. And you can like, just hear her laughing. Fair play. And she was just, yeah, she literally was just like, I appreciate the effort. All right, come on. <laughs> Good lads. <laughs> and then, Good yeah, well, lads. They, they served just in a shopping trolley. I like that. That yeah. was fair play. Like, yeah, yeah. So we yeah. did make the effort. We had to go and fucking, I don't I think know. someone's still got that DVD. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, fair yeah. Fair play. So there we go. That's my tale. Have I got any other tale? Have I got any other tale that I can say? Is that my thing? I think. Is that all? What else has happened? No, I think. Yeah, I think that's it, isn't it? I've been down, done some cool shit with my protein. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, oh, so I got back um, on the final day. I had literally 12 hours at home, and then we shipped straight off to... Yeah, I'm nearly done. Get drinking. I was shipped straight off to Manchester to film... Oh, yeah, you literally were the, gone, like, the day after. Yeah, literally right? straight away. <laughs> off to Manchester to film... Um, we had a day... Oh, we had a day at the trampoline park, because like a team, team building thing with, um, with uh, my protein team. <laughs> Which uh, we all immediately hurt ourselves within twenty minutes. <laughs> immediately, and I did the world's best RKO. Oh, I did saw you see that. It? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah so we're with some of the TikTok lads on there, Sam and James. They were really good fun. Mm. Uh, so we just dicked around the entire time. And then my uh, the guy who's like my handler, I guess you call him, he's mm. my pimp, yeah. my my protein pimp. You have to hold um, his pocket when you walk. Out. Yeah, Dan. He he was really good because he was like helped film some stuff, and then he just joined in everything and got fully sweaty with every, with yeah. us. But we were honestly, legitimately, we all hurt ourselves within. 20 minutes of being there really? and when I walked in I was like there's not enough padding here we're definitely getting hurt like yeah. because we're not we're immediately we've looked at stuff and gone oh we can throw ourselves off everything and I was like yes we're you, definitely going to test the boundaries of this safety that yeah. they've got going and um we immediately decided to have a race across so when you jump off some of these high things there's a really like big cushiony paddy thing that's almost like a giant airbag that you yeah. jump into um and so we thought, oh, we'll have a race across that because that'd be freaking hard because mm-hmm. it's going to be like going off a swamp. Yeah. But what I didn't realize was, so we're running across it. Well, I tried bear crawling. It was the wrong move. Yeah. So then I started doing the big gimpy run, like yeah. big legs swinging either side. And then I went for a dive finish to get, at least get second place. I'm yeah. like, not coming last. Yeah. What I didn't realize is, so around where all the, in where it's sank in for where all the cushioning is. Yeah. I weirdly, right? It's really hard edges. They're kind of foam, yeah. but they're still hard. Like if you landed on it, you're breaking shit. Yeah. yeah. They're just, it's like, you know, that blue padding. Yeah. I feel like that's all there is underneath the carpet that's on top of it. Right. And so it's basically a hard square edge mm. where they've, they've dug down in a rectangle shape. And then in the rectangle, they've created the airbag, which is obviously a dome shape. Yeah. I suppose you meant to land in the middle of it. Exactly. Right? But so at the edges though, yeah. you've got that point where the airbaggy bit starts yeah. and then there's the wall gap. Yeah. Well, I forgot about that. So when I went for the dive yeah. finish, I thought, well, the padding's going to be underneath me. But obviously, no. Because yeah. I've leapt off padding at this point, and there's just this V gap between yeah. where padding domes out yeah. and then there's a straight wall. So I landed with both arms on the solid wall yeah. and then thinking, fully relaxed, oh, well, the padding will be underneath me where it wasn't. So fully hyperextended all my lower back <laughs> as I folded into a V shape in between the, the dome airbag and the wall. <laughs> So you did like a fucking scorpion. <laughs> yeah. And I look over at James, who's done exactly the same <laughs> fucking thing. And we're both like, ah, ah. I pulled the right side of my lower back, and he's like, oh, definitely broke my spine. <laughs> Instant <laughs> power play. 15 minutes. So when I woke up in the morning, yeah, no back, well, back pain, yes. Like general soreness from working out and everything. But got up and went to walk, and my left leg went, and limp. And I was like, my ankle hurt. My ankle hurt. Didn't hurt me through the whole day of trampolining, bouncing around, playing dodgeball, jumping off shit, RKOing Sam off the top of this giant leapy thing. Uh, no, none of that. Oh, and I also won that thing. You know where you like stand on a mushroom and then there's two like batter things that spin around oh, and yeah, high yeah, and low. Like, gotta, yeah, dodge and jump. I won that yeah. against the young, all the youths. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that yeah, was the last man standing. Just hold on to it. Like, punched it out of the way. I was like, yeah, oh, like, oh. Took it on like COVID. Yeah. No, um, I just won. Yeah, that was just awesome. Just because you're an athlete. Because I'm an athlete. <laughs> Yeah, or everyone else was subsequently more hurt than I was. Like, yeah. Was yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah, so the, apparently- one of them was a paraplegic, so he didn't have much of a chance. They strapped well, him to it and so yeah. <laughs> Well, the thing was, right, uh, what, uh, no ankle problems. All the way, and woke up in the morning literally limping. Yeah. So what did I do in my sleep <laughs> that would twist my ankle? It was probably all the other pain. Just like, <laughs> just it was just like, oh. Gravity fed into the ankle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Was there anything? So we went next day, did some filming. Um, my protein have launched a jelly bean. So they've done a jelly belly collab. Yeah. So it's jelly bean flavors protein, and it's legit. I really want to try like, some. I haven't tried any yet. If you love red cherry jelly beans, it tastes exactly like red cherry. If you hate blueberry jelly beans, you're going to hate the blueberry flavor. Yeah. It tastes exactly the freaking same. Wow. So I don't like blueberry, so yeah. I consequently did not like the blueberry. I was like, oh, this is bang on. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is exactly, this is exactly, what, exactly I like. what I like. I don't like it. Yeah. And then the, the the cherry and the green one are all good. And Tutti Frutti is pretty good because it's not overwhelming either. Mm. So they are worth it. They're worth a pop and they're going to be limited edition anyway, so they're not going to be around forever. Are they, are they going to be the, just the smaller tubs or are they doing the full 20 size 20 serving ones? tubs, I think. Uh, I think so the limited edition ones always I are know. because the manufacturing is so expensive for them. I love that. Like, I just, I always want the big ones though. Yeah. I like... But I think if they get popular enough, they do do a big version of yeah. one flavor. Yeah. Yeah. So Fingers one's crossed overwhelmingly them. kicking ass. Yeah. I imagine it'd be tutti frutti. I can imagine that draw people. I think they're very cherry. Really? Yeah. Tutti frutti's all right, mm. but the very cherry is like, ooh, sweeties. Mm. I haven't, well, actually, um, I did, did get an order. I haven't actually tried I've any got of jelly them. jelly beans yet, downstairs so. from the day as well. I brought back like two protein, uh, protein shakers full, three of them full yeah. of jelly beans. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the snack for by the fire. Yeah. Jelly beans and, uh, jelly beans and cigars. Oh, that seems seems appropriate, right? So then, yeah, and then I got back and I've been settled in and um, I've done some some cool shit, but I'll tell you all about those other bits later. So that's my news. Yours has been really eventful. Like, you've yeah. had a really, like, overall and, you know, news that's been announced and not announced. It's been really good. Like, everything seems like you've had a yeah. super positive, like... Super fucking scary. Two, three weeks. Like, it's very... Um, there's a lot going on in my world now that's very like adult and requires planning. Only fans. And yeah, I'm <laughs> contemplating. Yeah. And I need incomes. What other incomes can I make? Cause yeah. I'm going to need them, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, it's, 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 uh, a Peter Pan. I'm still Peter Pan in it, but just with a contingency. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I think for me, I don't want to put a down on it because there's definitely been some great things. Having the pup's been amazing. It's really been like... Yeah, let's talk about the pup. Yeah. What breed is this thing? Because people have been messing around going, Lou's bought a, a, a devil dog. It's a, it's a happy devil dog, but it could also eat you. Yeah. And, and they're like, what is it? And I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. And I can't even Google it because I, what do I Google? Know. Like, big New Zealand dog it's can not New Zealand. kill shit. But I see I'm not even right. Yeah. <laughs> So it's a, a South African Mastiff. Fucking hell. Yeah. Right, Mastiff. So it's a Mastiff. I know yeah. Mastiff. Yeah. Beautiful dogs. Yeah. So it's yeah, South African Mastiff or um, a boar ball is what it's called. But That's the word I didn't know. A boar ball. Spell yeah. It. Oh, fucking hell. Don't ask me. So to people spell. can Google it and they can yeah, see this okay. animal. One second and I'll tell you how to spell that. If you send me the slow-mo video, I'll overlay that now. Yeah. So it is B-O-E-R-B-O-E-L. Boer ball. And uh, yeah, so just for context, they're when they're fully grown. Bearing in mind, they're when they're fully grown, they're well, they're. Give lean. context. Tell us because it doesn't weight means nothing to a lot of people. So let's do weights and let's okay. Let's they bring will, up different dogs so that people can get an idea. And we'll build up to your dog. Yeah. Okay. So dog weights in order. So we'll start with a sh- a shit chihuahua or something. Yeah. Dog weights. Let's see what Google brings up for us. All right. Let's have a look. Uh, breed weight charts, American Kennel Club. Let's find something so you can get context. So what's a small dog? What can I look at for a small dog? So a very small dog. you looking at something okay. like a pug or something like that. All right, let's um, P- the pug. Okay, here we go. So a pug weighs in at around about 14 to 18 pounds. Yeah. Okay, so that's your pug range. Yeah, so what's that in kilos? Is that like six, oh, kilos seven kilos, eight by, kilos? By 2.2, 2, don't you? So if it's, let's let's call it, say, 16. Yeah. So that's around about uh, 7.2 kilos. Something like that. Yes, around okay. about that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 7.2 kilos for a pug. Yeah. Okay, then we move up to what's another mid dog? So say Labrador. So labs are technically, they're classed as large dogs, even though they're not that large. Okay, well, really. what's in between? What do you reckon? So we've got um, pug is seven point seven and a half kilos ish. Uh, you could look at something like a Springer Spaniel Springer, or a, a, a Collie chat. or something like that. They're a little, so a little Spaniel. small. Spaniel, let's look at Spaniel. This will all be worth it, people, when you hear what Lou has bought. Okay, a sp. Come on, you can do it. Spaniels. Okay, spaniels between thirty to forty pounds. Yeah. So we're looking at around about eighteen kilos. Mm. Okay, for a yeah. bigger spaniel, eighteen yeah. kilos. That's a spaniel. Yeah. Lab. 
Were you not a lab is because you had Yeah, we had Lanza. a lab. So L- Lanza was fairly slim for a lab and he was about 28 kilos, which is like, what's that, like 60, 65 pounds, 70 pounds? Yeah. Something like that. But they can get heavier than that. You might you might get a lab up to about 40 kilos, sometimes even a bit more if they're a bit overweight because they do tend to be chubby. Okay. Then going up from that, a German Shepherd, yeah. which we all know, yes. police dogs. Yeah. Big Good dogs. Good dogs, big dog. 65 to 90 pounds mm. because you do get, you know, everyone's seen the smaller versions and bigger versions. Let's go at the upper version, the big boy version of a shepherd, 90 pounds. Mm. So we divide that by two, gives us 45. We take off another 10%. So we're on 41 kilos. Mm. German shepherd, remember that. That's the thing that chases you down in the street and scares people into sc- Lying on the floor going, please don't hurt me, please don't hurt me, take me to prison. I'd rather go to prison than have this demon beast attached to one of my limbs. Okay? 41 kilos. Yeah. Lou, how heavy does your dog get? Well, so the, there's a range, and it's quite a large range, but they, uh, on average, go from 70 to 90 kilos. <laughs> Double! Yeah. Double the goddamn Alsatian. Yeah. And they're, they're not fat as well. They're, this is like lean. Let's get this in perspective. Yeah. It's a muscle dog. Yeah, yeah. This is a big boy dog. Yeah. So, it, you know, there's a very good chance that he will weigh, you know, pretty much probably somewhere between what me and you weigh. The set, I weigh 84, 5 kilos. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. He's going to weigh around about 90 miles. He's going to be between us. Mm. That's insane. Yeah, they're, they're, they're monsters, but they're uh, they're lovely dogs. And our experience with him so far, he's been an absolute dream, to be honest. For, for a, such a for a pup and our experience with pups in the past and comparing him to other people's pups, he's so well behaved. Like, we... we had a we did a lot of research before and making sure we found the right breeders with the right genetic lines because that's yeah. something that we you know we had a dog before that was epileptic and we really wanted to we wanted to make the best possible choice um so we yeah we did a lot of digging around to 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 pick a, a reputable breeder that was very knowledgeable been doing it for a long time um obviously all the health screening and everything else and you we know, had to go all the way to Scotland. Too, yeah, we went all the way to Scotland. It was you know a five hour trip to uh, to head up there. But then there's plenty of there was other options that they there's not lots of them because they're not a super common breed. Mm. Um, but yeah, we went all the way up to Scotland and it was totally worth it. The the breed that we visited the, the, the breeder a few times before and we met the parents of the the you know what the pup you sent for me a picture of the dad. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, and yeah, he's. Let like, me just say, if you broke into this house, you would not only not steal stuff, you would leave more belongings in the house as yeah, an apology. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah. You would leave the car you came in with a sorry note and then walk your ass home. Yeah. So um, the 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 temperament, because we, the temperament between all the pups, they were massively varied, which you have it in all litters. There's going to be varying te- temperaments, but it was super apparent. And I don't know whether it's because I, me and Emma are much more in tune with it now mm. um, than we were years ago, but it was very apparent in a very short space of time, which one was going to be the right pup for us. And it wasn't the pup that was like the most playful or the one that was like, because I think that's it. Most of the time people go and like, what's the pup that climbs on them the most? And he's like, Do you think that? I think some people go for the one that's in the corner that's a little bit shy. No, a lot of people tend to go for the one that like connects with them the best because it's the one who's like you know running over. And normally, well, wouldn't that's that be the, the asshole? Part? Yeah, yeah, that's normally the the nutter, the one that's yeah. like fucking brash and, human. Yeah, yeah, just going fucking mad. Which that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you want a dog that's like really confident and high energy, if you know how to manage that, then that's awesome. But also, that is you know same as with humans, you can you grow up and you your environment changes you slightly but you still have that innate a, yeah that original energy, yeah, yeah. kind of personality like yeah, some, people, some, some people are more yeah. extroverted some people are more introverted whatever it would be and uh yeah we very quickly realized that yeah this pup was going to be the one for us um so we saw him at the six week mark got and we got them. Got male. yeah it's a yeah. it's a boy um his name's rollo for, That's from, such a cool name yeah rollo. from uh from vikings so yeah. uh yeah he he's just absolutely brilliant he's so easy to train obviously so when you first get a pup they're very they're fairly compliant like sometimes they're not that smart so they're hard to train but they they're they're nervous so they just do everything they just follow the leader then they go through kind of a rebellious phase in their Mm -hmm. kind of their teens um where all the training that you had kind of goes out the window so he's still early stages but he's really intelligent 
and his temperament's great, so it's not too much energy, quite easy to easy to manage as far as pups go. We still work, of course, but uh, he's just absolutely brilliant. And I I didn't realise how much I missed having a having a dog around because you know for mine and Emma's whole relationship, pretty much like you know we me and Emma met when we were seventeen, mm. and then with you know pretty much a year. I think just maybe just over a year, we we'd got a we started renting a house together. We had a dog, and that you yeah, know we, you had a, a dog like that was full commitment. Yeah, yeah. So like, um, like that, you need praising for that, mate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. That's what you did for that dog. Well, no, yeah. I don't think there's. I think there's less than one percent of humans would have done that. Yeah, well, I don't know, mate. When you've got a pet, you just do what you need to do to look after him. And I know some people like it was quite sad hearing about it because so Lanza was epileptic and. Um, he, he, it was not good, you know, it was quite severe epilepsy. Um, we managed it very, very well and we got to know his routines very well and we spent a hell of a lot of money on treatment and medication for him. Like, pro- pounds a month, wasn't it? Yeah, probably for the last, um, maybe three years or so of his life, it was about 500 quid a month in medication. But what is that in comparison to giving a life? to this animal like it's, it, it's priceless yeah. isn't yeah. it and he had a great life like he, yeah. the epilepsy didn't bother him like he had no fucking clue that he had seizures <laughs> yeah. he was out of it for a little bit and then he'd come back and then you know he'd recover yeah. quite quickly within a within an hour or so he was like back to normal and yeah loving life so he did really really well and considering the amount of drugs he was on from pretty much six to eight months old i don't remember exactly when he first had it had his seizures um he lived a good life, you know. He he was not quite eleven, which is not that's like a normal lifespan mm. uh, for a for a, a lab anyway. So yeah, they're yeah. not twelve because their hips go after that anyway. Yeah, I was gonna say he did brilliant, um, and he was still, you know, it ended up being cancer in the end that got him, which is uh, yeah. a bit of a surprise. But yeah, you know, some, is, something's gonna get him in the end, isn't it? Is that they, they can get the yeah? It's it's usually either like a hip, the hip rear hips, yeah, or hip, obviously hip like cancer. Or something. Because Griff, golden retriever, mum had, mm-hmm. he had both. But yeah. we beat the cancer with the CBD stuff because mm-hmm. the vet wanted to put him down. I was like, "Fuck you, vet!" Yeah. With your uh, desensitized ability to just say, "Hey, let's kill it." Yeah. And he lived for like two years longer than they were like, "He's oh, got about you know maybe three months at best." Mm-hmm. And then after I think it was seven months after the CBD treatment went in. Lump was gone, yeah. cancer was gone. The only reason he went in the end was he was he's, he couldn't walk. It was yeah, unfair to keep him going. And he was yeah. just staying there for my mum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That well, CBD massively helped Lanza with his epilepsy. Oh, it's amazing. Because um, he, you know, this was actually during lockdown, uh, the first lockdown. Lanza's seizure frequency started to really increase for some reason, and um, that's weird. That just we sage? think no. I actually think it was because he was used to interacting with his so you could tell when Lanza was getting a seize his energy changed like you could pick up on it like he what he didn't do anything different but you could tell just the way he carried himself and yeah. you could sense his tension um and like it was like he was higher energy like he he was desperate to go out for a walk even after he'd been walked he was just like you could yeah feel his tension and you could see it and um i don't know you know when you you spent enough time around yeah, you know, someone yeah, or something yeah. And, uh, yeah, he, we very, it's obviously, it's, you know, a neurological kind of issue. And it was during lockdown, he didn't get to interact with his brother because Emma's mom had his brother and she had another dog. So all of his other dog socialization went away because we were in lockdown. So he, you know, he was effectively Um, isolated from other dogs. So got it, yeah. And in hindsight, I feel like that was something that definitely, you know, definitely contributed because in a, you know, his mental health as a dog was, you know, not as good but because he just... I guess he's more relaxed after being with other dogs and things like that. Yeah. So it just, yeah, reduces that tension within him. Yeah. And as well, they communicate in a different way. It's like different types of mental energy. You know, they go out and they sniff and sniffing and doing problem solving in their little doggy brains is as tiring, if not more so tiring, than going out for ru- and running. Ah, okay. And it was like that extra mental stimulation that, as a human, we can't provide because we can't communicate with them yeah. on the same level that obviously other dogs communicate with them on. Um, and it's just all a theory, but yeah, that's it's the only thing it can be. And um, it, his seizure frequency got extremely bad to the point where he, you know, was having multiple seizures a day. Um, and we phoned up because you have to, you know, unless you go into the vets. But which we didn't want to. We wanted to get him put down at home. Um, you have to register them, and then they can come out and do that for you. 
and we we literally phoned up, got him registered, and we're like, okay, so uh, if this carries on tomorrow, we'll uh, we'll you we know, we'll have to phone, yeah, we'll phone yeah. up and and get him put down. And um, it sounds, I, I bit, it sounds so callous, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I know. We'll just ring up and book him in for the death. Yeah, and just we book in a bit of death, please. Yeah, it's, just it's can bizarre. I get a, a side order yeah. of death? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it, I just, but do you not think we should have that for humans too? I, I believe. Do you not that. think there's a point where you should be like, "Hey, I'm fucking done. Mm. Like, I'm good to go." Like, yeah. And they're yeah, like, they're like "No, yeah. no, we're going to shove a tube up your ass, one down your throat, two up your nose. We're going to attach you some electrodes. We're going to have an iron lung, mm. and we're just going to keep you here, pulsating away." Yeah, personally, I think euthanasia should be uh, should be legal. So but fucking skydive whiskey pills. Mm. Yeah, I, I 100 percent think it should. But and uh, anyway, so. We ended up giving him basically like a massive dose. Well, I ended up giving him a massive dose of CBD just because I was like, what the fuck? He's going to get put down tomorrow anyway. So what's the worst oh, that can I happen? Give him a nice big ash. Yeah, I just gave him a huge dose. Did like, it have THC in it? It did have some THC ah, in it. Nice. Um, not, you know, it was... It was yeah, but um, still had some, some active THC So THC is actually quite toxic for dogs. So you've got, you've got to try and have what like, you don't want to actively be giving them large amounts of THC, but there was some in it. There's trace amounts yeah. in all CBD. Um and he didn't seize the next day. We're like, oh, that's that's a bit odd, being as he's been seizing multiple times a day for well, like two weeks on, you know, two weeks in a row, pretty much. My sister was the same with um, epilepsy. Mm. She used to have like, not so much, she did have seizures mm. where she would literally, she was one time, she was driving out the estate yeah. to my mum's house. And she she looked at, she, a friend describes this to us. She's driving the car mm. and then she just said, she said something, you know, like her friend said something to her and she said that fear just looked at her and then it was like someone just pressed off. Yeah. She just stayed looking at her and the car just went off the road and slowly dinked a wall because she was doing like five miles an hour because <laughs> around the estate you drove really close because kids and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, she just like turned and then was off yeah. but still looking. Yeah. Like, Nying. so CBD reduced her seizures from like four or five a year mm. or maybe more to like one. Mm. It's insane. Yeah. Like the, the the ability of that stuff. Don't be wrong. You can't take it with every single cancer, every single thing. It doesn't work. With sometimes it exacerbates things. You have to really look into it before. But ninety percent of the time, I think it's a benefit. Yeah. So the fact that we're not giving dogs and animals this stuff as well, yeah, is bizarre. So it makes sense. Well, vets can't we, recommend reduce... it, and our doctors can't recommend it because problem, it's not it? it's not uh, you know, approved. But when when I did speak to my vet, could bear in mind, obviously been paying a lot of money for him. He's I know the vet very well because I've been there mm. so much with Lanza's, you know, seizures and whatnot. And uh, he was just like, I can't tell you that you can do that, but he's going to be dying soon. So what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Right. And I was just like, yeah, you're right. So anyway, and it made a massive difference. And literally with these mega doses of CBD, he went like five months without yeah, seizing it. again. Isn't it sad that we could maybe we could, if we'd have known or they'd allow mm. you to do this or suggest it, you could have yeah, done it could have, yeah, could have could have helped him. He, you know, he was getting old anyway, so it was going to get him. But yeah. anyway, off the depressing, well, off the depressing the, side yeah. of things. It's been a long time since I've had a dog, and that, and you know, well, it's been a year and a half, which feels like an age because my entire adult life I've had a dog. Mate, I've seen for three weeks, and it feels like it's been two months. Yeah, and I can't I was, imagine having a little life that's not there for a year and a half. Must feel like ten. Yeah, mate, it's it's been hard, and uh, yeah, we we were able to take him out. He's been out for his first like walk yesterday because he you have of to get course. vaccinated yeah, and stuff like that. So. Out and they're all jabbed up. Yeah, so he had his first walk yesterday, and we took him out again today. It was brilliant. He can't yeah. go very far because the woods right nearby, though. Yeah, we do, we don't even make it that far because oh, really? we're only just going around the block at the moment, just because yeah. you're meant to only walk them like five minutes for yeah, every month old they be are. Careful, aren't you? Yeah, because as their joints are developing, and especially with larger dogs because they grow so big. So fast, you've got to just be careful of their joints. You joint were saying, health. like, you notice differences literally overnight. Oh, yeah, 100%. You wake up the next day and you can look at him and you're like, you've cha- you've grown overnight. <laughs> well, like, I, was, I told you this earlier. So when we got him, he was about seven and a half kilos. And how old was he then? That's eight weeks. And so, now he's 11 weeks. He's 11 weeks today. So three weeks later, and he's about 12 kilos. So he's basically a kilo per week. Over a kilo per week. Holy shit. So, yeah, so he's gone up four and a half kilos. Yeah, he's get down to see this pup before yeah. he gets too big. Yeah, four, four, four and a half pup. kilos in three weeks. So that's like, that's over, a, what's that? that's over 50% of his body weight again. My goal is to get down enough for him to know me. 
Yeah. You know, I, want, my, I want to be Uncle Lex. Yeah, because my, uh, you know, I don't think you've ever met Chris, have you? But my, my best mate, Chris, because like, I don't see him that often because he's always working, I'm always working. And he said the exact same thing. He was just like, I want him to know me. Mm. Uh, and uh, me There's and Emma. nothing better than when you walk in and the dog's like, dude. Yeah. And uh, it's you. <laughs> me and Emma needed to go at someone's birthday and uh, we'd been invited out for this thing for ages. But the pups, we'd only had the pup a week. Yeah. So we couldn't leave him for, you know, a few hours because wow. it, it was about an hour drive out. So my mate Chris came over and he dog sat for us for about six or seven hours yeah. um, and just looked after Rollo. And, uh, yeah, he, he he said he was, like, FaceTiming his girlfriend, just like, <laughs> yeah, look at us best mates now. He's going to remember me. Yeah. <laughs> but well, the whole night he's there going, Chris, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> to yeah. the dog you know Chris. me you like well, me he's got Treats. biscuits by yeah. the side of his face and he's going Chris <laughs> yeah. yeah so oh it is it's brilliant he's, like and he picked up some basics like super quickly within three days are they he, quite high on the intelligence ranking yeah so um, mastiffs in general aren't the shop they're not stupid by any means but they're not they're not like super intelligent they're not like kind of collies or labradors but or the thing isn't there with dogs that people they, they, they mistake stubbornness for stupidness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like Frenchies, and, and the, the way they rank it is, like it's the amount of times you have to say a command hmm. before they will start learning or reacting to it. Yeah. Um, now Frenchies are not stupid, but they're stubborn. So they'll ignore the command a couple yeah. of times yeah. when you're learning it until they be get, become obedient to it. But it's not because they don't understand. It's because they're like, nah. Yeah, I'd rather not. What am I game for this? Yeah. Um, so... Is it like that? Is it is it a stubborn breed or is it just... They're, ex- they're extremely stubborn breed, so, okay. um, but they're they're fairly switched on. They're quite smart. And obviously, again, you've got deviations in all... Every single dog, you can have one of lamb course. that's... Bell curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Lanza was super sharp. He could pick up tricks really, really quickly. Lanza's Lanz, brother, yeah. thick as shit, didn't know <laughs> sit. Like, <laughs> like he knew it, but he just didn't didn't do yeah, it. He like didn't know anything. Nah. Yeah, and it was just like, what dope. have I ever got for sitting? Yeah, just dopey as anything, <laughs> literally. And uh, so, and they were brothers. So yeah, it varies massively. But so far, picking up stuff really quickly, um, and especially like just really surprising. We also we've done this uh, this puppy training course. There's a I think it's on YouTube. He's on YouTube. He's on Instagram. His name, well, his name's Will Atherton. And I thought you said your dog's on Instagram. No, no, right. no, no. I have th- I've been thinking about doing you that. You definitely but should. Yeah, I know. Have you, done the stand- have you done the in the first thing now he's allowed out? You've got to take him to the gym, do the stand up down the red thing, remember? What, the holding the paws? Got to do it. I have got a f- couple of photos of him, a photo of me holding him. Um, on there, it. but I haven't, I haven't done that. I was going to do one where he's like he walks down the, walks down the red carpet. Nah, and you then need we do just something one. simple to do week to weeks off, so that you can have this montage. Mm. One, it'd be cool for you to have for yourself, but two, it's good for the gram. Good for the gram. Yeah, or TikTok. Yeah, when he goes from seven and a half kilos yeah. to seventy five. Yeah, because people be imagine when he's a big boy. Yeah. Well, oh, I need to show you this photo. He, we, he went to the gym. Was it last night? I think. Oh, he's been. Yeah, he went down the gym last night. And literally, so this was like half nine at night. So there was not many people. We were about to close, and then everybody stopped and came over and sat on the floor oh with him. My <laughs> God, it's like he's giving some kind of seminar. Yeah, literally, everyone just sat on the floor in a circle. There's only like ten people there, Look or something that. like that. Everybody's lost all ability to have good body posture. Everybody's like slumped everybody's over, just, yeah, like, just like slowly leaning towards a dog. There's two, four, six, eight, about nine people, and they're all just like. Oh, they've yeah. all melted. Yeah. And the dog is ass first towards the camera, just being like, yes, rub me behind the ears. You are my bitches. You need to come over there, mate. You'll, oh, I'll, I'll, be over this, I'll be over. What day are we on? I'll be, I'll be over over the weekend. Yeah. I'll come down on the bike. Yeah, tomorrow I can't, but Sunday you can. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Cool beans. Uh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely brilliant. But anyway, uh, definitely, if anyone's got a pup or is thinking about getting a pup, 100% look into like some kind of a puppy training course. The one we're doing, um, it's the company's called Fenrir. He's a, he's a British guy, Will Atherton. It's definitely and clever. They, give it, you so, it's, they reassure you that when you're there, that listen, this dog can do what you want it to do. And mm-hmm. a lot of people are like, oh, he's just like this. No, you're like that. Yeah. You're the problem. 100%, the, yeah. 100 it's, all the time. Yeah. So, and it's so simple, but it's boring. Mm. This is the problem. It's, it's repetitive understand. as well. It's repetitive, mundane, boring shit that you have to do. 
but in like three or four weeks, you'll have a different animal. Yeah. A well-behaved, enjoyable delight to have around And the thing you. is, if you put this graft in for the first year that you've got the dog, oh. like you've got, you know, some dogs, it's like, you know, eight to 12 years for most dogs. I'd say that's yeah. average lifetime. So you've got the rest of that dog's life. Yeah. And you'll be able like to be reap the benefits of it. Relaxed with it around other dogs, relaxed leaving it at home, relaxed just be it being around kids. Mm. Like just just so much benefit to this short term slog. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, you see a difference in, in a dog in three days when it's left with somebody who's yeah. like at, like on it. Yeah. Like if if I was left with when I did have the dogs, yeah. If I was left with them alone for three days, but in that three days, those motherfuckers didn't bark, they didn't whine, they sat and behaved when the leads were going on it was only when there was you know outside forces that would come in and and not do the routines yeah. that they just went to shit because they will they're like kids people like, treat Whoa. dogs too much like humans and they you know what's the word where they're like it's like anthropomorphized where they're like yeah they they make them into a human and they yeah. think that their kind of personality is a human doesn't and benefit they, the dog no, the dog actually all. doesn't enjoy that it confuses the animal they, they every, people included Boundaries are important. Yeah. And it makes for a happier animal in the long run because you're not having to chastise it, you're not having to punish it, you're not having to do all of those nasty things. Yeah. The do- the the dog take wants time. somebody to take charge. That takes they're stress off the dog. Animal. Yeah, because then they're like, okay, that's the person who's in charge. That means I haven't got to stress. I'll just yeah. do what I'm told. And, oh, and they're happy to fall in line. That's a hell of a point. When you see a dog, it's like, bah, 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 and you're like, fucking asshole dog. Shut yeah. up. Like, that. Whose dog is that? Yeah. That's because that dog thinks it's his job to defend that entire territory. So yeah. it is on Defend the it's family. On, and yeah. He's it's like, on, it's this on, is on him. It's on fucking, you know, death con for the whole fucking time because it's like this is my fucking job yeah. the moment that job's taken away from it that dog will chill the fuck out because like yeah that's not my problem yeah so that, that's yeah. literally it that is a hundred percent that's how it works yeah it is it's like the way that people like think about them they do and i get it like they're fucking awesome but if you genuinely want to do the best for the dog you need to understand that it is a dog it's not a human being yeah. like even the the one of the things that is it's super common sense oh we time again. Look at us. Right, we're on it. <laughs> it's super common sense, but the first thing you teach a dog in terms of a command, it should be its name. And everyone's like, "Oh, it knows its name." It doesn't know its name. It does like no. It, it hears like, a tone. It, it hears a you're... word that you're saying. It, you are attributing that to its name, but what that dog is actually, actually like, your dog hears this. Whoa, whoa. Well, but it's it's and so it knows. Look, whoa, whoa. It look. It means look at me. For yeah. another command, because when when I used to say Lanza sit, he would the Lanza apartment. He's talking to me. I'm, I'm about to receive another command. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't know that it's it his name. Go, yeah, it's me. Yeah, it's there's a command about to come. So pay attention. Uh-huh. That's all. That all a name a is to a dog. It's, yeah, it's not its actual name. It doesn't know that yeah. that's its name. Yeah. Um. And like it's thinking about it in a completely different way. And I, me, and Emma are fairly good with training dogs in terms of just like the structure. But you need the team. This, this proper course is fucking amazing, honestly. That's so important mm-hmm. that you're both on the same page. Oh, God, yeah. Doing the same commands and having the same reactions to the same issues. Yeah. If that's the case, you will you will nail it so yeah. fast and that dog will be so happy so quick and and it will behave as you want it to behave, you know? And, and this is the problem. When you have two conflicting humans that are treating the dog differently, the dog's confused as shit. And they're not stupid either. Yeah. Oh, so they, they know who they, they can get away know, with. Stuff yeah. Well, if you treat the dog like a baby, you're the bitch. Mm-hmm. It's alpha. Yeah. So it's like, well, I'll do what the fuck I want around you. But then when Papa walks in, who's, yeah. you know, the, he he's then takes alpha role. It's like, uh-huh, okay, I can't get away with that shit anymore. Yeah. So you both need to be alpha as the humans. You, mm-hmm. Well, you're one's alpha, one's beta. Yeah. So who's the alpha, who's the beta? It's right. Emma. Emma's the alpha. Yeah, because Emma, yeah, Emma works. see that. Yeah, Emma works at home, so she's with him all the time. She needs to be the alpha then. Uh, yeah, she, yeah, she she's there all the time. And just being honest as well, Emma's like she's really good with the training. She's she's better than I am. Um, she's really on it. I I'm also pretty good, but I'm just not there as much. So the relationship's not as strong between me and Rollo as it is between mm. Emma and Rollo because of that. But um, yeah, in oh, and that it works me a little bit inside. <laughs> It doesn't. It doesn't bother me because it's always going to be the way. Um, like with Emma, like because she's just too. She's better than me at it, and that's yeah. not like it's not because I'm not good because I am. But Emma's just. It's something that well, Emma's you can't really. Avoid it. She'll be with Doug more. Yeah, but <laughs> and she's that's just. The way it needs to be. She's just gifted with it as well. Like you'll. 
when when there's another dog around Emma, <laughs> they just know. <laughs> yeah. Just but know. that's cool that you accept that because it'd be a lot of people wouldn't want that. They'd be like, well, I want to love me more. Mm. And in that moment of having that and trying to make it love you more, let it get away with more, you then confuse the dog, make it a bad dog. Yeah. So the fact that you've taken, you know, the, the what's the word? The adult approach or the sensible approach the correct approach of being, well, I'm not there as much, so I can't be that role. No. And just accepting that fact is the best thing you could have done for the dog. And also, realistically, who, if that dog's going to misbehave in any way, who's that better to misbehave for? Me, the person who's big and strong and can, yeah. you know, manually handle it to a certain extent. More likely to be. Or also, yeah. the skinny little 50 kilo blonde girl. <laughs> It's probably better that it's I don't know, me. Mate, I don't know who'd rather fight. Well, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> but uh, you know what I mean? It's just like, not that that should be an issue, yeah, but also yeah. like, I'd rather, I'd rather. Well, that's why you bought the dog, though. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, because also, you know, coming out and recording the podcast, this is something that I do every single week. And Emma's left at home on her own. Mm-hmm. And she she's not as comfortable being left on her own, especially since we've moved, you know, moved house and we're in a different area. The family's not quite as close. It's just. It's just another little comfort thing, and we've always had that. We've always had a dog whenever we've lived away, and it's just it is. It's different, and yeah. at the moment she's still like because he's a useless little fucking sausage yeah. at the moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll send you that video so you can uh, you can put it on there. But yeah, maybe f- fire up a photo of what they look like when they're fully grown as well. Mm. So yeah, I can uh, send like you a photo that. of that. But yeah, they're they're stunning, and hundred percent. I recommend like looking at that as a as a breed. Just make sure, like this is something that scares me, man. Because I did it in terms of when we got Lanza, we we just we went to a reputable breeder, but we didn't do a load of research into it. We didn't really understand the full extent of it, um, and purely from a financial point of view, like we spent tens of thousands of pounds on Lanza's medical care over his lifetime, easily, yeah. like probably thirty to forty thousand pounds over over Lanza's lifetime. Mm. That's quite a large investment. I think most people would be like, "Fucking hell. college fund." Yeah, that's a that's yeah. a good chunk of money. Um, we potentially could have avoided that if you know they can do tests for ep- or genetic tests for epilepsy. They still could have it, but it's like it massively reduced the pot- potential of that. So, do you do diligence? Look into stuff um, as well for temperament as well. Because like, you didn't the, do that though. The parents. Lanza had a beautiful life with oh, he, somebody he would never have had otherwise. Yeah. Like, imagine if you'd have rejected that dog because of that. And well, then who he would have got left with or what would have happened I've, to him. Yeah, I have heard horrible things of people that... Because if anyone's been around, anyone who's had epilepsy or seen animals with epilepsy, it's not a nice thing to witness. Um, you know, they lose control of their body. They lose their memory temporarily. They lose control of their... You know, they might Ladder. wet themselves, shit yeah. themselves, whatever it might be oh, going really? on. Yeah, whatever's... Yeah. Whatever's, whatever's in there is coming out. Yep, yeah, it's not nice to see. It's not nice to deal with. It's quite hard to deal with in terms of like then you've got effectively a dog who's just had its memory erased. So if you've got an aggressive... A dog that has potential for aggression, you need to... So even with Lanza, so we... He'd never growled at us or bit us or anything, but we always were very cautious around him at first until he started to settle in because yeah. he can freak out because he doesn't know who we are. He doesn't That's know who he is. He doesn't know where he is. Yeah. He knows fucking nothing. His memory's just been zapped. Yeah. Um, so then you're trying to like bring him back around. Then we've got to like clean up, you know, the floor. We've got to clean him up, bath him, all while he's still kind of semi out of it. Um, and then when that starts happening multiple times a day, that's quite challenging. Um, and it's just emotionally really hard because that's obviously something yeah. that you love. You don't want to see it go through that. No. And um, see him. Yeah, we know. Uh, yeah, we've been told several times that people have just not been able to emotionally deal with seeing their dogs. I'd say most have people seizures would. and yeah. they've had a couple of seizures and they get their dog put down because they can't deal with that. Ooh, that's tough. And I'm like, fucking hell, I don't know how, like, it's got to, like, they, that must be hard for someone to deal with for the option to be to kill them. And then that's where the CBD thing comes in and mm-hmm. be like, hang on, try this. Yeah. You know? And it's, you know, it seems expensive, but it's not really. When you pay like £220 for something that will last you four or five months mm. it's not really that expensive no not it's at all quite in comparison to the pharmaceutical stuff that they'll charge you money for of yeah. prescription yeah. it's uh, actually a drop in the ocean but yeah <laughs> yeah the, there's um i don't know it, it's it's all i'm saying is just do your research look into it because it's not it's not i'm kind of against a lot of this because some places they're just churning out dogs now and it's n- with no care for the the oh. health or the welfare of the dog let me tell you, 
Yeah. So I was at my buddy's car dealership the other day. Yeah. And um, there was a guy in there when I walked in, and he had this lovely little sprig of spaniel, mm. little female sprig of spaniel with him. And um, so it's my mate Dave, Lewis Solutions, if you're in Shrewsbury, solid bloke, will never sell you a lemon, really genuine family run business. Yeah. Um, I, I, all my stuff goes through him now. And he was my neighbor and he's my friend, and honestly, genuine guy. So if you need anything around Shropshire, just check out Lewis Solutions for cars and stuff like that. What's it but called? anyway, Lewis Solutions. Lewis. Lewis, yeah. Yeah. Because he's. David Lewis. Oh. Ah. Yeah, Lewis Solutions. Spelt the same way as mine? Yeah. Uh, L-E-W-I-S. Yeah. 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 And um, went in and then uh, found out that that guy, so he had previously, it was one of Dave's friends who just come in to say hello because mm-hmm. nice people, people pop in to say hello all the time. Yeah. Um, there's yeah. always something going on there and they have their own spring and spinals and stuff as well. They were, uh, you know, the dogs for the family dogs that were always there with them and uh yeah he'd just taken this dog in as a rescue yeah and it'd been he just lost his own spring of spaniel uh cancer new thing had it all its life you know puppy farmed so this dog had been basically locked in a cage and farmed for puppies and uh probably beaten mm. to you know whatever not walked not socialized nothing and now this guy taking it on and he'd had it a couple of months, and it was only just left the house after three months. Yeah, because it, it was so scared. And this now, this animal had the shit start in life. He's now with this human who cares for it and is working, and he's going to hopefully, you know, for the next hopefully eight to ten years of its life, mm-hmm. give it a beautiful livelihood. But it was still super nervous about coming close to anybody else. It just literally sat on his leg, like yeah. next to his leg. Yeah. And he was like, it was like, this is my protector. This mm. is this is the good human. This is the good human. Didn't trust anybody else. Mm. But it was so beautiful to just, even though it wouldn't come near you, it was just be like, look how happy it is to just be back. And he was out walking and it was like, the moment he get up to walk, it was like, oh, yeah. we're going. Yeah, we're going and it was just round, running around his legs. Yeah. Like just so safe in his company. And I was just like, fuck you guys who did that to that dog. But also look how, you know, this guy's taking it and, Maybe something worse. At least this is a beautiful ending for this dog. Yeah, they're so innocent, aren't they? I think that's it's the just, thing. We do not deserve dogs. Yeah, we yeah. really don't. Yeah, there's something. It is. It's absolutely amazing. And and I think I said I've said it on a previous podcast that like you know when we didn't have Lanza, it, we just don't we don't laugh as much as as we used to. And then having having Rollo about. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah. He never means to be funny. <laughs> no dog means to be funny, but Jesus Christ, they are hilarious. Yeah. And like, you can't help but smile and you get up to go for a piss and come downstairs and he's happy to see you again. Yeah. You've literally been gone a like, minute. A minute and a half, yeah. And, and like, then he's just like, been? yeah. And like, I don't know, that's nice. Like, humans aren't capable of that kind of, that that level no. of love, are they? No. God. So, Imagine yeah, a teenager doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't like it really. It'd be a bit awkward. Like, oh, piss off, you weirdo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It, so yeah, that's been that's been brilliant. The uh, I'll give you a, a quick summary in terms of because obviously everyone knows about my hip flexor. Um, I had oh a, hell yeah! Let's so, I, I, so yeah, I, recap. I, just uh, I'll keep it. I'll keep it concise. I don't want this to run on too long. Lou was in a porno, overworked himself, thrusting hip, too t- much, t- hip vigorous, flexor. vigorous thrusting. Yeah. Now, so yeah, I tore my hip flexor in BJJ. Um, so I had no training for like three or four weeks, which was really like quite tough. I, I realized that that had been the longest yeah, I've gone without training in like two years, probably the, the most I'd had. I'd, well, I don't think I'd missed a week of training in two years. Um, How did you deal with that mentally? Not too bad at first. Um, Is it a bit COVID-esque? I was just lockdown esque. Well, I was able to still train because obviously I owned a gym, yeah. so it wasn't it was like I didn't have that too badly. Like um, it was weird because of the injury, and I imagine it was very similar to you with the bicep. You're almost in your head a little bit, just like oh, am I gonna am I gonna get back to normal? Am I? Is this yeah. like you're almost doubting a little bit? And uh, and then I had a few moments where I was like, oh yeah, I'm sound, I'm fine, and then I. will be walking and then all of a sudden it go ping and then I'd feel it again just from walking. Just I was like, like, "Oh fuck, no, you're not fine." Are you? Like, hey, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not fine. Because yeah. I mean, some ta- some parts, know. like I was almost like, "Oh, there's nothing fucking wrong with you. Don't hurt. You're all right." You know my moment for that with the arm because yeah. I was like pre- super positive, wasn't I, all the way through it? Yeah. When they cut the cast off for the first time and I saw the scar. Yeah. And I saw it properly. Yeah. It pulled back like the the, the uh, kind of gauze that was on top of it. Yeah. And my brain went, "Oh, this yeah. is." real yeah this is a proper injury like mm. in my head i was like fuck this thing you know we're gonna defeat all the timelines and we still fucking did mm. but there was that moment where it went 
oh, you you need to do your due diligence with this. Like, mm-hmm. take this shit seriously. Yeah. Yeah. So fortunately, no surgery is going to be required for me, Woo-hoo! which is absolutely brilliant That's news. amazing news. Yeah, because I... I cause the peptides are in the freezer downstairs. Yeah, they are. So I will be home. starting that. Um, so BPC157, because yeah. everybody always re-asks us this, BPC157 is a peptide you want if you tear some shit. Mm-hmm. TB500, you can also run, but that is a long-term solution to reduce injury risk over time and to help you feel just generally quite nice and good. I think I got about a shot. Top it up, bro. Top it up. About. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, you've got that, that. that. You want to take that home tomorrow, tomorrow and start yeah. it tomorrow. Yeah. Two shots a day. Bang it in. If you want to, are you going to go hardcore? Are you going to go into the hip plexer? Um, I'll give it a try. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to feel about doing it. I think as close as you can get it. Yeah. Now they Ooh, say though, yeah, doesn't really need to be done that way because yeah. it is, does work. They've done some. Obviously, more and more people started using it. More and more studies suggest it is systemic. Well, the hip flex, like the actual where the the tear is, is under the quad. I so I don't know whether to go. Quad, and then obviously, I personally injected yeah. it right into my fucking tendon. Yeah. If I could, I got it. I w- I was sticking it like a heroin addict right into that joint there. Yeah. And one time, mm. one time only, I got it in the tendon, yeah. and I felt it flow up with the tendon. Yeah, you know when I got my geary thumbs. Yeah, so never no problem since. Oh really? Yeah. So I had um, a nodule build up on my thumb tendon. Do you think because of TB or? Uh, well, it built up, I think, from boxing and catching bad no, thumb, I mean, bad thumb like shots. For the reason it's not come back. Yes, I, maybe, but also because I had um, what did he inject into? He injected some kind of steroid, yeah, directly into the tendon. But this doctor was so good, man. He he would he got it into the tendon itself, into the sheath of the tendon, mm-hmm. and when he put it in, it, I could feel it flowing up the tendon sheath. And I had that one time on my bicep tendon, yeah. one time. And every time afterwards, I tried to do the same thing, yeah. I never got it. But that one time I felt it go jump up and I was like, oh, that's a healer. Yeah. That's a Jesus Got jab. Him. That's the Jesus jab. Yeah, that's man. a reincarnation jab. Yeah. yeah. So I was I was sticking it in right by the tear. Mm. And I would suggest. I will try, yeah. Although it is systemic, there is no harm in getting it as close as you fucking can. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to try it. I'm, I'm still not like 100. I'm not really liking jabbing myself. David like, Laid, yeah. who... He got it in his groin, Ooh. and he jabbed the groin tendon, bro. Ah. And that's so he manned up. Yeah, yeah. I'll, look you good. can I'm do gonna, it. I'm gonna give it a try. It's the fact that he do, got, do you yeah. not like because you're doing it obviously multiple times a day for fucking weeks and weeks and weeks. Well, you only do it twice a day. Yeah, so you, so do you could do one site specific and one like not site specific. Yeah, Is but it, you need so, to be collagening it as well. Yeah, so you need to be taking collagen alongside 500 milligrams of vitamin C when you take the collagen. Yeah. To help synthesize the collagen. Okay. So that's your that's your task. Have you got collagen? Yeah, I've got collagen protein, okay. yeah. Cool. Yeah. So um, yeah, that I'm gonna grams. start MK uh MK six seven seven. Yeah, well. I'm a bit mim mi- about the MK. Yeah. I'm considering just using natural growth. Really? Yeah, there's a guy who um can get real stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hmm, maybe I'll give it a run. Yeah. Uh, only at um the I've only at the Anti-aging level, though. Yeah, no, like, no, nothing to do with bodybuilding. Yeah, all to do with health and anti-aging. But it is cost versus hassle. Versus, well, I've heard is it real? that MK is actually better for healing than growth because growth mimics natural growth hormone. So you'll get that spike and then it'll yep. drop off, which is which is kind of what you want, really. But with MK, it's really stable. Which is why you can get those issues with. Um, we still talk about ten milligrams a day. Yeah, which is why, in theory, okay. you can get issues with insulin sensitivity. I'm banging um, it right back in tomorrow morning. But MK, Spine yeah, tomorrow morning. Okay, no, I'll keep punching them. Punch Fucking it, fucking it. Out, Mike. <laughs> Just uppercut the mic. <laughs> <laughs> we're back in it, boys. Back in it. We've had some rum and we're. <laughs> Speed bagging the We are mug back. Phone. Oh, this is so much more fun. I know. No yeah. more coming in and not drinking fucking whiskeys or rum. Let's get shit no more of that all shit. the time. It's rums, it's whiskeys, it's fucking cigars, it's You're man time. The sign down. We're fucking back. Yes. We're, that's over, what we want. we're over halfway through the bottle already. Yes. But this uh, is what we yeah, want. Yeah, so I think I might start MK, um, which is a, a growth hormone. Um, um, M- what is it? MK677. Um, yeah, so it's a. It's a uh, also known as MK Ultra. 
Yes. Um, Not a pro-hormone. It's a secretogen. So it isn't... I mean, do do your due diligence, do your research, but it isn't as damaging as a pro-hormone would be. You don't need PCTs or anything like that, but you do need to be aware of what it's going to do, the fact it's going to increase your appetite, the fact that, yes, some people do um, get some kind of bloating from it if you're on it for too long, but... You, in some insensitive. capsules, which we would recommend buying, there's one, you get 20 milligram capsules, you want to split that in half. It is, I'm going to warn you now, disgusting. It is like swallowing uh, some uh, some kind of chemical, pure chemical. It's awful. But... I just, did you not like put... Did, did, oh, did, did you... you reca- just, yeah, I banged it in my I mouth. recapsule mine. Oh, nah, man. I, I poured half of the cap out yeah. into the lid and then um, just put some juice in my mouth chucked it into the juice and swallowed it and every time I'd be like uh, I just and spent, I just spent half capsule. an hour like a, a little druggie just there like in, I bought like a pack of gel capsule empty capsules oh I've got those and They're then just more... was like I just oh you have put it. half in. I'll have to do that that is a better way of doing it yeah. I think do my protein do the capsules maybe they do I have no idea so you can buy really cheap you can get the gelatin capsules or if you can't take gelatin you can get non-gelatin capsules well, when I tried them okay. you want the big ones get Whatever I don't yeah, know the what the measurements ones. are, but get like that the bigger size. Of them. When I tried it before, though, one of the things, and it's something that I have been struggling with, and I think it's because of the lack of training that my my sleep quality's gone quite bad. Oh, MK will help that, and yeah, MK knocks you out in like you get the best sleep ever. Like. I always take MK either two ways, right before training, mm. as in like half an hour before or before I drive there, yeah. or right before bed. Yeah. And my preference is right before bed for the sleep. Yeah, same because. Rest is the biggest battery recharge we can we can have. So for me, that was the biggest benefit, and it's, it negates a lot of the hunger that you get yeah. with the ghrelin increase. Yeah, I was going to say for me because one time, <laughs> you know, so we've got <laughs> our, in the morning. Yeah, you know, we've got those fucking capsules. I was yeah. like half asleep, and I took my nighttime tablets in, in the morning. <laughs> Fuck me, I was so hungry. <laughs> Honestly, it's legit. if you struggle with appetite, it's great. Take it. In the yeah, morning. it's also yeah. That's the potential. If you're like me and Lou, who can you know we eat. Yeah, you then, can put food yeah, away if you want. Yeah, yeah. Then take it in the evening. So Just about four, about an hour before you go to bed. Uh, Forty-five minutes. Half an hour. I am. I yeah. probably would benefit from taking it a bit earlier. I actually do notice I get to sleep super fast if I do take it about an hour before bed. But yeah. Most of the time, I'll get into bed. I'll take it. Then I'll just chill out I'll in take bed. It from- in bed. Oh, you, I've, got, I've got it like, I'm not like asleep, but... Dude, my feet are drunk. Get up and do something. Yes. Show the camera. High five. Show the camera how, how drunk you are. Well, I can are. still walk. Like, I can still fake it to make it. But I can feel my feet are like, la, 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 la. Uh, <laughs> I haven't had this feeling for a while. I love it. The thing bit is, of, everyone... Bit of a nicotine rush from the cigar. Bit of the alcohol kicking in. Everyone listening to this, they're probably like middle of the day at work or something like that. And then we're just drunk. <laughs> when you get Friday home, night. you pour yourself a little whiskey, you have yourself a little do cigar. Bruh, it is just the way. Mm. Once a week, you do the, You need these outlets, man. Mm. This is what resets us. I don't care. You can keep your gender neutral and all this stuff. Fucking men need this stupid... Just, dumbassery yeah. where you know we have a little bit of an unleash a little bit of a let go and then we wake up and we're like fuck that was a good night yeah yeah I really want to do a because we've not been doing so we've not been drinking much we've not been smoking Dude, much and we've not I've been had, doing much Q&A's as well bro I've got a Q&A but we'll do that on the short yeah yeah I, I feel like that needs its own because we had a, a one I hadn't put up that I didn't know we had which was your TRT results oh one. yeah yeah um, so that's going to go up and so we don't need this we can do the short on but, the questions when you do that make sure you say because that's like two weeks out of date now just say on there, like, or like maybe I'll put in the description. Like, yeah, it's because really I put in it that it's seven weeks. Yeah, so okay. it's regardless. Seven weeks on TRT. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not. Uh, I think mentally, I definitely feel like I'm more resilient. Physically, there's not as much of a difference as I thought there'd be. I missed uh, a couple of shots for travel reasons. Mm-hmm. And because life got so busy, I just forgot to do it for two mornings. Yeah. Genuinely felt a lower mood. Really? Oh, there was a, a genuine change in my attitude. I was way grumpier. I was way less amiable. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I even, I like, I picked myself up on it. I was like, oh, 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 I'm different. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, it's definitely, definitely a mood elevator. Like, yeah, it, for it's, me too. It's definitely a leveler. 
Yeah, definitely, 100%. definitely. Uh, for me, it definitely feels like my because I one hundred percent after I after I tore my hip, I thought fucking hell, I'm gonna like this is gonna be quite mentally tough. Yeah, and Dude, I can't. It's not been people ideal. don't understand. They haven't seen you. Yeah. You were literally moving your leg like a dead leg. Yeah, like you sat on the floor and watched this, and that you had to lift your leg into position to sit down with yeah. a straight leg. It was, and when you came up the stairs, if you, how would you? So you were dragging it. You would like step up with one leg and then drag the other leg up. Step mm. up with one leg, like you had a peg leg. Yeah, and I, that's when you came. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, you know I was what? a bit more worried. I wasn't worried when you told me about it originally. Yeah, and then when I saw you, I was a bit like. Oh, you know what the manager fucked, did? Lou might be fucked the, up. The, you know what the manager did for the gym when he realised I tore my hip flexor? I went on Amazon. <laughs> <Put> ramps in. <laughs> went on Amazon, got a package delivered to the gym with my name. It was a fucking eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. I was like, what a fucking prick. You sir, a legend. Yeah. You sir, a legend. Yeah. That is what you want. See, that's what men need. Yeah. When you fuck shit up, you need some bloke to come in and do something childish. <laughs> and that will elevate your mood. Yeah, it got me an eye patch. Ladies, if your leg. guy is in pain or something's going on do something dumb and childish to make him laugh it will help yeah it will help but, but we are with that and cheese on toast oh i love cheese on ooh, toast yeah. i have cheese on toast you make some cheese on toast after this yeah i'm gonna shit myself after yeah. but it'll be totally worth it a little bit of weed a little bit of cheese on toast yeah i think yeah. that sounds like good good terms uh-huh. yeah so long story short i got the go ahead to do some super light training and i have I had one very very light Training you're session. Moving way better. Yes. All my daily movement is fine now. My my getting up the stairs, my getting in the car, my mm-hmm. sitting down, all good. Um the and he from the test, the manual test, he said it feels like it's about eighty percent strength. Nice. He said the issue's gonna be scar tissue build up. So BPC um, will reduce that. And obviously just manually getting in there to break some of that down yeah. too. Um benefits of the BPC is if there's anything else going on as well, it will fix that alongside. I've got a little bit of something. Like this is wobbling as we talk. I've got right. a little rotator cuff thing that's been niggling me. Can you remember It'll ages ago when bro. I, uh, you know, when I did that bench press AMRAP and I went like, oh, oh started yeah, started tipping. Yeah. And my shot, my, my rotator cuff's not been. Bro, bench right. press is a motherfucker. I went back on it the other week for the first time in, I'd say, two years. Already, I started feeling bits that would fuck up on it, and I was tight. Yeah, I was dialed in. I was driving with the legs. I had a slight, light, l- slight arch in lower back, pushing through with the chest. Shoulders were locked in, and it still felt like it could fuck me up. I don't know, mate. I think it, I think it's for some people it's no good for definite. I think I'm just one of those. Yeah, some people it is. Asian joints. For, for me, I benches never ever hurt me. This is all like. Not that I can ever recall. I might sometimes. <laughs> me, benches always hurt me. Yeah, sometimes it just doesn't agree. It's the same. You could say that with everything, though. Like some people can deadlift all day, every day, and be fine. When you started it, did you start it though proper with like the power in mind? What when I first or started? Did you benching? do it like I did? Where it was like, oh no, I, I want big benched. man tits. Yeah, yeah, I just bro benched, and I was just like, because oh, that's what I, fucked I, me up. Wah. There was a point where I had to. I knew the first set was going to be so painful mm. that I would need spotting through with 80 kilos but then I knew after the first set it would numb up Yeah, like a boxer who breaks his hand and be like oh, I've just got the last two rounds that it'll numb up I can punch with it again Yeah, that's what my, every single chest day was like for me Yeah, for two three years yeah I, didn't, I never had it that bad it was just yeah. um, I and think then, like fortunately my structure fits a bench press kind of nicely but uh, and yeah. you, you know what I mean you you do any kind of... I had this weird thing. I don't know whether... I didn't actually speak to you. I don't know whether you had it. You're a fitness influencer. I own a gym. We're both in the fitness world. Mm-hmm. When you got injured, when I got injured, I felt like a bit of a dick. And I'm just like, oh, man. like, Because like, n- injuries happen and not like... Oh, you feel you, like you should be able to avoid them. Yeah, you feel like yeah. oh, you're, you should be immune. You should know better. You should have prevented it beforehand. Nah. But like yours was just an, an acute thing that happened. So, yeah. well, Mine even, was just an acute thing that happened. It I wasn't wear and tear. I did have that because I heavily questioned the doc. And I was yeah. like, is this me doing dumb shit that's built up to yeah. a tear? Or is this like a singularity? He's like, no, no, this is a singularity. He said, dumb shit in a tear is upper tendons on the bicep. Mm. Singularity of unfortunate occurrences and events that should, that's when it pops off the forearm. Yeah. I was like, so there is no way that I've been doing something stupid for a long period of time that's caused this. I was like, no, no, mm. this has just popped off in one go. And I was yeah. like, that genuinely was like, all right, so this is just unfortunate yeah. scenario. Yeah. But I genuinely believe it was fatigue. Mm. Because you look at everybody, we talked about this on another podcast, recently who's torn something. The first thing you say was, I had a long ass week, very little sleep. So if you've had little sleep, 
be careful you're in the gym. If you know you're you're underrested, mm-hmm. go in that gym with that in mind. And that one thing where you think, should I? The moment you think, should I? Don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Real, and that happens to life as well. If in life you go, should I? Don't. Because it's your gut feeling going, hey, bitch, mm-hmm. this might not end too well. Pay attention to me. Mm-hmm. That's why we have that little thought. And like, what is it, like eight out of ten times? Yeah. We might get away with it, but mm-hmm. that's two times. Yeah, that yeah, that one or two times, it's not worth it Something for bad it. happens, yeah. 100% is not worth it. Yeah, because I did, I felt, I felt silly for, for like doing it and... Because I do pride myself on I'm not somebody who's like going to check time ego where they're just like oh you know if it, you just battle through the pain because I've done that shit in the past whereas now if something if if something's even a slight niggle I'm very in tune with my body and I'll identify it I'm like okay why am I doing this movement if I'm getting you know the very slight niggle of elbow tendonitis and I know that that's going to build over yeah. time I'll just be like no I'll just do a different variation that doesn't cause that and I'll swap things out and change them in the past where it's like grind through yeah and I, I don't do that anymore no. and since I've taken that approach my body's never felt so good and yeah. then all of a sudden just like one thing goes snap and I've never torn anything you know but if you do in this long enough, you will get hurt. Yeah, you it's get like it. anything. If you play tennis long enough, you'll get hurt. Yeah. It, and that's, you know, it's one of those, it, it's variables. You know, it, it, enough times trying something, you're going to get that uh, that anomaly, that occurrence is going to happen. Because the, 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 the odds of it occurring get, you know, smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. So I definitely did, like, you know, it was, it was weird. I've never... I never had that before where I did. I felt silly. I felt like I'd maybe I'd, I'd I know I hadn't because I, fair enough. I'm in a new. I was, you know, doing a new sport of jujitsu, yeah. and it's something that's extremely dynamic compared to something that's very static, which I've been yeah. doing for a long time. So it's understandable, but I thought I was doing enough to mitigate it. And yeah, it was a, it's, a, it's a bit of a weird one. So isn't you're naturally it? athletic, and you just jump into stuff because you know, like physically. You're usually pretty capable, mentally capable, and so you just go, "Hey, let's freaking go!" Mm-hmm. And and then these are just wake up calls. Because there we are. That is where we're going to end it because we're running out of time. We're already oh, on a yeah, blackout hey. now, so there you go. That Finishing off with a blackout, like, like the good. Why old not? Days. Why yeah. not? There yeah. you go, boys and girls. You're bored of seeing our faces anyway. Yeah. If you are even looking yeah. at our faces, so that's it. Thank you for all joining us. Thank you for uh, witnessing another blackout. We did promise one. Well, we've got a guest next week. Next week, next right, week yeah. we've got a guest on Sam from um, Zenful Men is on. So expect a very um, mindful podcast which will get slowly less mindful as the whiskey kicks in so until then i hope you've all had a great week bring forward what was good leave behind what was bad because fuck that shit bring forward only the good and let's make ourselves a little bit of a better human every single day that we wake up have a great fucking week and we'll catch you in the next episode yeah toodle pip toodle pip bye